help us holy spirit acts chapter 20 and verse 32 acts chapter 20 and verse 32 please read with me if you can see it projected ready one to read and now brethren i commend you to god hmm. uh-huh which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them please keep that scripture there paul is speaking now he says and now brethren i commend you i hand you over follow his discourse i hand you over first to god everybody say to god and then to the word of his grace notice his sequence i desire that you be built up i desire that you possess the realities of this kingdom but this is the formula i hand you over number one to god then number two to the word of his grace that if it is true that you are handed over to god and you are handed over to the word of his grace there is a guarantee that you will be built up and then you will be given an inheritance among them that are sanctified so it then means that if a believer is not built up if i cannot trace maturity and growth if i cannot trace results in your life the bible already has diagnosed that condition that the condition is telling you that you have not truly met god and you have not truly met the word of his grace are we blessed hmm. now brethren i commend you i hand you over to god and then i hand you over to the word of his grace that means if you start your pursuit and all you are just looking for is word 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 something will still happen to you because the scripture testify of a person so he says i hand you over you need an encounter with this person for what he has said to make sense to you are we together now it is amazing that many many believers I, I say this sincerely many believers have truly not met god neither do they know him and not knowing god especially at times like this can be risky and can be dangerous so i thought to start my session challenging us on this issue of the knowledge of god there is a level of stability and confidence that comes to the life of the believer when you truly know god can we discuss knowing god for a few minutes while you're writing please pray reveal yourself to me oh god reveal yourself The knowledge of the holy. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, In the beginning, God. Please read with me the first four words. In the beginning. One more time not ambition not vision in the beginning of anything god this is the spiritual sequence in the beginning of my destiny god in the beginning of my business god in the beginning of the year god in the beginning of my family life god in the beginning of my pursuit god in the beginning of anything god it is a position that his jealousy protects if at any point you just put him in the middle of your pursuit that 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 violation to divine sequence will have a side effect in your life not in the middle god in the beginning god so the foundation for a believer's experience is god not just vision not just purpose as powerful as they are not ambition not money not a desire for success in the beginning god john 17 please 
for my eyes have seen the king you're the lamb upon the throne you reign forevermore for my eyes have seen the king the lamb upon the throne who reigns forever john chapter 17 jesus is praying we we'll read the first three verses john 17 and verse 1 the bible says that jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said now jesus is praying father the hour is come glorify now thy son that thy son may glorify you verse 2 as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him if you are a christian please read verse 3 with me one to read and this is eternal life uh-huh that they might know thee and jesus whom thou hast sent please look up wow so eternal life is not just the arrival of the life of god in a believer that begins the journey it is a journey that explores the person of god and his son jesus christ jesus himself is speaking not some prophet not some apostle he said this is eternal life please keep that scripture there that they may know thee this is eternal life the experience of eternal life is at work in me to the degree to which there is a hunger and a passion and a drive to know you the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent it was prophet jeremiah in chapter 9 prophet jeremiah please write the scriptures down chapter 9 from verse 23 and 24 this is a word conference it says let not the wise man glory in his wisdom neither the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches 24 but let him that glorieth glory in these this is the pride of the believer in this kingdom that he understandeth and knoweth me so if ever there is a reason to boast is that i know this god if ever there is a reason to stand tall and to speak to be vocal about this faith life that more than just the pride in achievements and all of these things as good as they are that the real pride of the believer is that he knows god are we together hmm. second timothy chapter one and verse two second timothy chapter one and verse two apostle paul mentoring his church his, his son in the gospel 12 i meant to say second timothy chapter one and verse 12 1 and verse 12 it says for which cause i also suffer these things nevertheless i am not ashamed why for i know whom i have believed i've not only believed him i know whom i have believed remember what jesus told the samaritan woman at the well he said you worship what you don't know anything about you were just introduced into a ritual but we know whom we worship there is no religion i know where intimacy and relationship is a requirement only the faith life when you go to a herbalist you don't even need to know his name he will just ask you what is your problem this buy the chicken buy the goat drop the money save johnny with whatever you are given he's not interested in a relationship every other religion emphasizes rituals and tries it prides itself in the distance between that deity and the man but the faith life is predicated upon a desire to know god as mysterious as he is he desires to be known and that our strength and our confidence our stability in this kingdom is predicated on the knowledge of the holy are we blessed daniel chapter 11 a popular scripture and verse 32 
Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 the B part says but the people hallelujah I'm part of that list but the people that do know their God two things will happen to them in this kingdom number one they will be strong and then number two they will do exploits the people that do know their God even at times like this they shall be strong and they shall do exploits so we're going to examine very quickly four platforms for knowing God it is important that we strive by the grace of God to come into this comprehension of this one that we call God and there are four platforms listen when you understand this you can get someone saved and literally walk him through the pathway the path that leads to spiritual growth and you can guarantee that if you follow that path you will become matured in the things of God but the people that do know their God no matter how weak they are if they do press to know him they will be strong and they will do exploits are we together number one the first platform that helps the saints to know God is the scripture the first biblical platform please pay attention the scripture second Timothy chapter 3 from verse 15 and 16 the scripture is the first authorized platform now listen the realm of the spirit I, I would want to add this very quickly the realm of the spirit is a vast realm and there are many ways of routing the realm of the spirit both authorized and unauthorized there are people who have found themselves interacting with the realm of the spirit but not by the road that was defined so Jesus said I am the door he didn't say I'm the only access point I am the door if a visitor comes through your house by jumping through your window he's in your house but he's not welcomed are we together now you open the gate and the door to demonstrate and communicate your receiving that person so many people have learned many spiritual things but have not routed their pathway the path to their knowledge through scripture or from god's authorized channels our desperation if not guided will lead us into several things that's why today in the body of christ there is a mix of all kinds of things scientology there is a mix of spiritism there is a some of these things came from the desperation of people who desire to know this god but because they they didn't pay attention to be mentored to be shown the authorized access points their hunger led them to fasting and prayer and they interacted with strange beings and strange spirits and came down with messages that look spiritual but negates the pathway so you find out that the more they are spiritual the more you see a deviation from the image and the character of the christ are you blessed our desperation must be managed and we must be shown the authorized pathways we are not the first to take on this journey the Bible says to follow them there, there are some them who have gone ahead of us are we blessed the Holy Scripture second Timothy chapter 3 please from verse 15 and 16 and that from a child so the journey starts from a child thou hast known the holy scripture and the bible says that the holy scripture are able to make you wise unto salvation wise unto salvation you can be wise there is the wisdom that leads to destruction there is the wisdom that leads to salvation remember what satan told i mean in 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 genesis the fall of man satan came to him and said to eat of this tree he says for it has the ability to make you wise there is the kind of wisdom that the world gives but this wisdom that comes through scripture is wisdom that leads to salvation it is able to make you wise unto salvation through faith 
which is in christ jesus 16 it says all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable so scripture is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness to the end that the man of god may be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works the agency that leads to this kind of man is the holy scripture that it is able to impart wisdom that leads to salvation and then all scripture is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness to the end that whoever engages it if you follow that pathway of scripture at the end you will be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works everybody say the scriptures mm. i believe the bible now let me explain something this bible from a human standpoint has a lot of human imperfections the vessels that wrote this thing and then the committee that canonized this bible when you look from a human standpoint you will see a lot of gaps theologically speaking and historically speaking that means that the bible is not just a book that you just look at as a novel if you look at it without the assistance of the holy spirit you will be surprised at the kinds of error you will draw from it this book you see can be opened but the seal must be unlocked for you to see are we together now so just opening the bible and reading it intellectually will do you no good it is the reason why you can finish volumes of books bigger than this yet it would take almost a lifetime to finish your bible because there is a spirit behind it are we blessed the holy scripture when you look at scripture from the lens of the spirit then you will learn the ways of god what does the bible provide it reveals the character please write it down scripture reveals the character and the methodologies of the kingdom when we study scripture the goal is not just to crime verses and to feel spiritual no the bible is a revelation of the character of god everyone say character the bible is a revelation of the character of god so that when you study through the stories through the parables from the old to the new testament you would you would like like an artist working on your mind he begins to paint a picture about the god of the bible so that everywhere you look you look from the lens of the image that the bible has created in your mind i give you an instance if someone comes to you now and tells you in the name of jesus or by whatever prophecy tomorrow your life is doomed now it does not matter what that person saw and he said god said i should tell you this you can say thank you but there is something about the character of god that you know from scripture that the lord is gracious and compassionate he's slow to anger the knowledge of that character can veto any prophecy you have received you can go to god on the strength of that which you know and say god i do business with you i know what you can say and i know what you cannot say in isaiah 38 when the prophet came to hezekiah he said put your house in order he was not a fake prophet he said you will not recover isaiah said i've heard you god bless you you have, go i will turn to god and i know what to tell him when you know god it will give you stability in these evil times you can get up from a dream that spells destruction and say i know this god i know what to tell him he 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 has he has bound my relationship with him with such such integrity that the, I, I know what to tell him no wonder david was a man after god's heart he will say lord let me deal with you directly these people are evil people but with you i know what to tell you hallelujah the holy scripture that means when a believer is not exposed to scripture he does not even have an idea of who god is even if you cannot see your pastor when you hear his voice you know ah this is his voice why because you have sat and listened to him again and again and again 
you listen to the voice of your wife your husband your children it's amazing how you can pinpoint their voices from um you know several people speaking that's how it is with god the holy scripture reveals the character of god do you know one of the ways you conquer fear is when you have a personal revelation of who god is just listening to people's opinion about god today you will trust him tomorrow you will distrust him today you will come into a point of certainty tomorrow you don't know what to believe again but i pray that in this conference god will bring us to a place of persuasion Amen. hallelujah mm. scripture number two the second platform for the knowledge of god are the names of god the names of god scripture reveals his character and his methodologies i think i should just i should just back back up a bit and, and explain uh, still a point that i made over the scriptures the methodologies of god please look at me in this kingdom results are not as important as how they were gotten it's not just to say let me just get results uh -uh. for god's signature to come upon your result his pathway must be followed i told you the realm of the spirit can be routed by different agencies and you can obtain results but if it is not by god and by his ways you do not have his approval on it even if it's a genuine result are we together now yes so scripture reveals to us the ways of god i give you an instance there are many ways you can become wealthy and you can become blessed let's talk about finances but god has a predefined formula that is revealed from scripture are we together now and you see the truth is that if you follow any pathway that is not of god there will be a side effect waiting for you there is god's way to wealth there is god's way to happiness there is god's way to influence there is god's way to growth there is god's way to every the way of the lord is revealed in scripture so when i'm studying my bible i'm not just being loyal to a ritual that i was born and a christian family compelled me to continue honoring i have come to a point where i i want to know the character of god and i want to know his methods there is god's way to church growth there is god's way to making the nations hear your voice if you do not follow his way there will be side effects eventually that will not be worth that journey you took are we together so let's go to the next point the names of god exodus chapter 3 please if i were you i'll pray in the spirit for one minute while i'm just receiving this exodus chapter 3 let's just pray in the spirit for a minute or two and then we continue exodus chapter 3 from verse 13 hallelujah now watch this the second platform for encounters and and the knowledge of god are his names you would notice from scripture that every time they encountered god they captured that experience in a name and they preserved it so every time you wanted to learn about that dimension of god you would come to that name the name of god captures dimensions of him because you see god is infinite and he is vast so he decided to fragment himself into dimensions and those dimensions are captured in his names one dimension of god you find will not reveal another dimension Jireh will not reveal Rapha, but it is all God. Are we blessed now? Exodus chapter 3, please, from verse 15. 
and moses said unto god moreover okay and and god said moreover unto moses thus shall thou say unto the children of israel the lord god of your fathers the god of abraham isaac the god of jacob had sent me to you this is my name forever and this is my memorial to all generations i think we should go back to 13 we're doing 13 to 15 and moses said unto god behold when i come unto the children of israel and say unto them the god of your fathers had sent me unto you they shall say unto me what is his name what then shall i say unto them very wise man god i don't know you you want to you are sending me to represent a god i do not know life will ask me questions that only my knowledge of you will help me answer you are sending me into the business world you are sending me into ministry when i stand before principalities and powers who will i tell them sent me when i step into the business world and i am not allowed to do certain things to make money and the spirits that control wealth in the cosmos that manipulates people to bow to satan when they stand and say who sent you who will you tell them had sent you god do not send me to moses if you will not reveal yourself to me i know what they will ask me i was once there when i go back and i tell someone on a wheelchair stand up he will not just stand up just because i spoke what about you must be revealed to me ah someone well right where you are just lift your voice in one minute and pray lord show me the dimension that my destiny needs in this season reveal to me a dimension of you Kabarato sadiata let every other name fade away pray let every other name fade away until there's only you let every other name fade away are you praying for some of you is rafa the ministry god has given you he's given you a healing ministry but do you know the god that heals do you know the god that heals He's sending you as a financial apostle. Do you know the God that blesses? Or do you just have business ideas? It will take more than a good business idea. It will take more than a good proposal. You will need to know the God that lifts. God is sending you into leadership. Do you know the God that makes man? The maker of the heavens and the earth. Is someone praying? let every other name fade away let every other name fade away till there's only you hallelujah listen you must catch the dimension of god that your destiny requires there is a name of god that will support your assignment in life make sure you find it before that journey starts you are a man of god you must know the god who restores you must know the god who can make men you are a leader if all you know is just the god that saves congratulations but you will fall short of your assignment life will ask you who sent you The names of God the nation of Israel took time to study the names of God as they sojourned from Egypt to the wilderness every time they found the name of God they would capture it and they would give instructions and say teach your children and your children's children when they ask why are we doing this tell them once upon a time God showed up in a certain way. We captured that experience. Any day you need him to show up like that again, call that name. Matala pora katosiata. Kebarujias kebaranda kata. Ah, that something happened 
in 2007 i would have died but i called upon his name now that attack is coming again that name is still there the name of the lord is a strong tower that the righteous can run it's not just what i call i can enter the name and i am saved We know God when we know his names. There are names that God is called, oh, brothers and sisters. There, there are dimensions of his power invested in his names. Hmm. When you call him faithful, he does something to you. When you call him mighty God, he does something to you. When you call him El Shaddai, he does something to you. Ah. We make miracle walk, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We call you, say, the miracle walker. It's no longer a song. You are calling him to your life. Waymaker, miracle walker, light in the darkness. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? I will lift up my eyes to the hills, the psalmist said. From whence cometh my help? He says, my help. I don't know where yours comes from. But my help, even with the pandemic, my help comes from the Lord, not the landlord. The Lord who makes man, who makes heaven, who makes earth, who makes man. I tell you, I, I just sense a strong anointing just just sweeping through this place can you pray in the spirit in one minute i just sense that there's faith rising someone is shaking away every nonsense that the devil has spoken to you are you praying Lift your voice and pray. Shabaratosia. This is a word conference in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. You see, some of our mothers and our fathers they didn't have the opportunity to go to school and to be intellectually enlightened as we are but they knew something about god mama will get down on her knees and she may speak whether it's yoruba or Igbo, and call a name that she called before you were born they vowed to hand that said they said nobody gives birth in this family and while she was fasting and praying god came to her and gave her a name he said any day you are in trouble call this name listen your assignment is to use your life and give god a name that those coming towards you will study he is not just supposed to stop as the god of abraham isaac and jacob it, the, the, the revelation of god to us at the end of my life i should be able to say i have seen god in this way and the generations coming study this name study this name promise keeper my light in the darkness that is who you are listen when you are in an uncomfortable situation don't just cry and shout and say god oh help me that's an emotional prayer with no power there is the name of god that is responsible if someone is sick and dying you don't need jire no you need rafa there is a name rafa reveal yourself to me it says i will call upon the lord 
i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised by doing that i shall be saved from my enemies call upon the name of the lord in one minute you are going to call upon the name that you know so far some of you there are names you have not called in a long time that's why some doors have refused to open lift your voice in one minute whether you will say it in english you say it in your local dialect call that name again the name you call him in your secret place the name you call him before gates that refuse to open the name you call him when it looks like your destiny is closing mighty god lift your voice and pray you are the covenant keeping god you are the covenant keeping God Yahweh the covenant keeping God one more time lift your voice lift your hands you are you are the covenant keeping God Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I tell you, there's faith in this place. The third platform, very quickly. The third platform that helps the saints to know God mm, is Jesus the Christ himself. Scripture revealing his character and his methods. His names revealing his dimensions. And here Jesus shows up as the express image of that invisible God. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15 Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15 the Bible calls Jesus the image of the invisible God all creation this God that you believed and you've had all kinds of opinions about now someone has come in the flesh to personify and embody this invisible God and he calls him the firstborn of every creation Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3 Hebrews chapter 1 the Bible says God who in sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in this last day spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed to be heir of all things by whom he made the world verse 3 the Bible says who being the brightness of his glory uh-huh and the express image of his person so jesus came as a revelation of god jesus came as a correction of our opinions about god he came so that we can now have a standard to compare we look at jesus and compare with what we have known and heard about god and everything that we have known that is not in jesus christ it becomes our manual for editing our understanding until jesus showed up there were many things that were credited to god that god had no business with it was the limitation of those who were mandated to interpret him at that time until jesus came all that they knew about god was a fierce deity who would burn with fire and brimstone over everyone and jesus came as the expression of god he revealed the love of god he came to personify the scripture that said i have loved you with an everlasting love and i have drawn you with my loving kindness 
when he walked upon the earth he demonstrated a dimension of love and ability and power that dumbfounded the scribes and the pharisees who had learned him theologically they could not reconcile what they had read for years now with this man they were angry and said this can't be god god does not behave like this god cannot love that far to finish a crusade now and sit down with only one woman talking with her with the same passion no the god we know he is only interested in a crowd of people i'm not sure he has that time to sit with just one person and jesus came as a correction of our mindset and our perception about god so you want to know god look at jesus the image god personified are we blessed first timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 first timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 and without controversy great is what the bible calls the mystery of godliness what is that god was made manifest in the flesh he was justified in the spirit he was seen of angels he preached unto gentiles believed on in the world and received up to glory god becoming a man in the person jesus now listen please god is not a man please say that god is not a man god only became a man if you say god is a man it means it's wrong to worship him because you don't worship the creature god is not a man god is god he became a man to help men are we together now yes because there is a law in this territory that until you have a material body you are illegitimate in this realm so he had to wear a body the word became flesh so that he can dwell among men then we beheld his glory even as of the begotten full of grace and truth god is not a man he became a man are we together now and his becoming a man is powerful because he went back to heaven with his body that is the guarantee that he's coming back if he went without his body we will not trust his returning because where will he get a body from again are you seeing now we believe he's coming because he went back with his body so he will still honor the law of territory when he's returning because he has the body he will use to return with now he does not need a virgin to give him a body again he's seated as the man jesus we know so anytime you say he's coming back it's not just because people said he's coming back he has fulfilled the law that allows his entrance here again today he's seated on the throne with his body the man jesus but he is god you're not a man no you're not a man you're the god who opens doors no man can shut he's not a man oh. you're the god of everything no one like you that is god for you his personal name was given to moses called jehovah is the hebrew word y-h-w-h yad he wa he it was his personal name do you know what that name meant the one who brings into existence that's it the one who brings into existence the one who is responsible for manifesting anything so when he says i am that i am is it was such a sacred name the jews did not even mention it the names of god is someone blessed that you can go and study the names of god and match it to the challenges that you have in your life now jesus came you see why the name of jesus is powerful because he came to embody everything that god was so whether it is rafa you say jesus you are right whether it's jaira you say jesus you are right 
whether it's seeking you you say jesus you are right someone shout jesus, jesus. shout that name say jesus. jesus in ancient times you had to qualify the need jehovah jireh jehovah rapha and jesus was given a name you now see what happened in heaven all those names as a reward were given to him an office the bible says that name was given exalted above every other name that at the mention of that name when you invoke that office hmm. jesus the revelation the complete revelation of god next time you see it's because we don't have this knowledge so when you say jesus to a situation your ignorance is glaring in the realm of the spirit and so there is no power of performance but now you go back after this conference and shout jesus you know what you are saying jesus means rafa plus jaira plus sikenu plus every other thing you're the god of everything someone shout jesus over your health shout jesus. jesus over the pandemic shout jesus. jesus over that situation that has mocked god in your life shout jesus jesus, jesus the embodiment perfect theology god made manifest can you spare me five more minutes the last dimension or platform the last platform for knowing god this is very personal it's called your experience hmm. there is a dimension of god that only your experience can teach you job 42 and verse 5 please read it if you're a christian one to read but now my eyes you can doubt what you hear but you cannot doubt what you see i've heard of you they've said a lot of things but now my experience my experience has revealed a dimension of you first john chapter one and verse one the epistle of john first john chapter one it says that which was from the beginning which we have help me which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and then now our hands have handled everybody say experience when god wants to use you to reveal a dimension of him it is very usual with god that somewhere in your experience there will be an event that will practically bring you to a point where you will need that dimension of him yourself and when you are now delivered from that dimension it strengthens your conviction you ask almost anybody that truly works in the healing anointing they will tell you a time came in their life there was a report there was a situation they were left face to face with their sermons it was a defense and when god brought them through it they said now i know god heals i know from scripture i know from his name i saw jesus healed but my life now is a testimony when people speak from the standpoint of their experiences it comes with a conviction that is compelling knowing a theoretical god is very risky you must trust god for an experience with god do you have an experience with god that gives you the confidence that you have your experience is not the ultimate basis of your knowledge of god but it is a powerful support system i know whom i have believed i'm persuaded when daniel was at the lion's den when he came out of that den i can tell you that his conviction his persuasion everything changed your pastor if you would ask him he would tell you 
that his sojourn in this life so far he's experienced so many things and has required the hand of god the good hand of god upon his life at several instances do you know that most hymns you know why hymns are powerful because most of them were not those special numbers many of them were experiences of people they saw the deliverance of god they saw several things so even though the people are long gone the hymns have refused to die your experience there are people through this pandemic they've gone through things financially health wise they've survived what people said could not be they could not survive and so when they pray they don't pray like 2019 again or 2018 when they say my father my healer it's not just our father like a religious prayer they know what they are saying hallelujah that he showed up for you in a way showed up for your children showed up for your family your company said look just consider yourself gone and you went to him and said lord you are the restorer and after two weeks they called you like they've never done in the history of that company the next time you are reading i will restore the years you will believe it because you have an experience that can relate with that do you know why you know that amala is delicious the things you saw the things you had from your mother somewhere along the line life gave an opportunity for your hands to handle it now you believe now you believe are we together it is risky to just see and hear you must trust god to bring you to a point where you experience it there are things i know today i will die believing because my life is a testament of it the knowledge of the holy scripture revealing god and helping us know him the names of god capturing different dimensions of him that educate us and teach us who god really is then jesus the embodiment of god in the flesh and then your experience follow this pathway and you become a dangerous human being positively speaking on earth nothing will move you you will stand unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life this is what this generation needs more than any other thing conviction that you can stand and say i know god and 20 years later you are still saying i said the same thing i'm still saying the same thing our vacillations are proof that we know a theoretical god and god is calling us in this conference i'm lending my voice with all other speakers who have been communicating dimensions of the kingdom to call us back to the place of certainty the knowledge of god please if you're in ministry hear this the days that are coming will require more than the ability to speak well it will require more than the ability to just manage and and administrate properly you will have to stand upon the platform of conviction because life is coming to test conviction the bible says if you fall in the day of battle it is proof that your strength is small is someone ready to pray do you like prayer please rise up on your feet I have heard of thee with the hearing of the ear but now my eyes have seen you I commend you to God and then to the word of his grace it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance hallelujah prayer point number one you are going to cry to the lord god of heaven that he would reveal himself in a personal way and in a definite way to you it's he said call on to me and i will answer i will show you i will show you it doesn't have to be a supernatural encounter 
but it must be an encounter that creates persuasion and conviction are you ready to pray please lift your voice in one minute and pray your destiny will require this sermon the days ahead will require the knowledge of this sermon i commend you to god i commend you to god that scripture reveals i commend you to god revealed through his name i commend you to god revealed through the person jesus i commend you to god revealed through your experiences don't be tired this is a word conference you are investing in prayer you are sowing in the spirit are there people of prayer here we we'll give ourselves to the ministry of the word and of prayer hallelujah praise the lord the next prayer point he said but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded you're going to cry to the lord create conviction i'm tired of believing this today and doubting what i believe tomorrow i'm tired of allowing fear i watch a news and in five minutes i'm afraid there's something about god that must give me stability listen please look up i'm still establishing the second prayer point did you know that because of the pandemic and all that has happened around all through 2020 you know there are people today people have committed suicide by themselves there are people today who have had all kinds of sicknesses that are directly fear related are we together i'm not even talking of corona no not at all high blood pressure how will my life be how will i feed five children how will i feed i, I, I mean it, will I, I, I do i know what tomorrow brings you find rest when you know god so you are going to pray lord take away fear from my life by giving me convictions convictions about god the integrity of his person lift your voice and pray strengthen my faith grant me conviction i reject fear fear of the future lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray hallelujah praise the lord now you're going to pray you're going to call every month of 2021 call it by name and send words of faith are we together from january february please don't be quiet these are times when you should not be quiet you should not be quiet call the months and declare bless them with the name of the lord january i place the name of the lord upon you february my god goes before me march someone is praying i declare tragedy free in the name of jesus failure free in the name of jesus full of wisdom full of grace full of exploits triumph victory by the spirit someone is speaking over his year recreate your year prophesy those following online go ahead and pray go ahead and declare by the spirit
help us tonight in the name of Jesus and I will not be silent and I will always worship you as long as I am breathing I will talk One more time, let it come from the depth of your heart and I will, I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as. Help us tonight, Spirit of the Living God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I want you to do well to review all of these teachings. There is so much you can really understand that a go. Let me encourage us to get these teachings and listen to them again and again. The Bible declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, uh, I pray that I don't break any protocol, but let me just honor these great servants of God myself. Thank you so much, Pastor Imos Fenwa, for coming. And then, thank you, Pastor Shola. The Lord bless you and honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. We, our first session, we began to discuss on the subject of knowing God. We'll never be able to talk about manifestations in the kingdom until we really, truly know the Lord. And I just felt stirred in my spirit to teach tonight on encounters. Hallelujah. And I pray in the name of Jesus that our hearts will be open to learn. I truly salute your pastor for allowing this platform for believers to mature. This is the only way believers get matured, when they are exposed to the whole counsel of God. Especially at times like this, we need the truth that can not only set free, but build up. Remember our scripture earlier on? I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Job chapter 42 and verse 5 for tonight. I'm teaching on supernatural encounters. Very briefly and then we'll pray. Just to open our eyes to the mysteries of the kingdom that empower the saints to rise and walk in victory. Job chapter 42 please and verse 5. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, Job said but now my eye seeth thee i have heard of a theoretical god i've heard of him from someone else but now i have an encounter myself john chapter 4 very interesting story let's start from verse 39 john chapter 4 from verse 39 this was an encounter that jesus had if you remember your scripture with the woman by the well the samaritan woman we call it we're reading down to verse 42 ready it says and many of the samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman look at this now this was when jesus had an encounter with the woman she was so touched she ran and said come see a man that had told me what I had done. Now, they did not know Jesus. They had not met him. But they believed the woman. Please keep the scripture there. They believed on him 
not because they had an encounter they believed because they trusted the woman's word and many of the samaritans in that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified he told me all that i ever did next verse so when the samaritans were come to him they besought him that he would tarry with them and he abode there two days and many more believed because of his own word they heard him teach are you seeing the levels now they had the woman's testimony and so they came to church but now they heard jesus teach himself verse 42 let's read together please one two read and they said unto the woman now we believe not because of your sayings for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the christ the savior of the world supernatural encounters that it is possible that the testimony of someone or his dealings with god can be so alluring it can bring you to god but that the, the god's ultimate desire is not that you know him as the god of another person his desire is to bring you an encounter are we blessed all through scripture we see that many people had encounters with god and it became the basis for their conviction their stability and their exploits write this down please an encounter is a supernatural experience that brings the reality of god to a person or a people a supernatural experience that brings the reality of god to a person or a people they are called encounters So when you hear about the wonders when you hear about the great things that god has done and continues to do in the life of people it it cultivates that hunger but their testimonies are not enough you must come to god and have an encounter that produces convictions if we do not contend for genuine encounters this generation may not have the power and the stamina to to stand the reality of the times that we are in are we together the days that we are in the revival the awakening that is sweeping across the nation will not only require people of zeal it will require people of encounter are we blessed and by the grace of God and by the privilege of the election of grace I am a student of the move of God I have studied the moves of God I have studied men and women who have had encounters with God and the validity of their encounters were demonstrated in their lifetime I've had the privilege of meeting a few people who were able to pioneer major revivals in their lifetime and I thank God for the honor of being used by god to do a bit of that so i what i am speaking about respectfully is not theory i know what i am saying and if you pay attention to these truths i assure you that something will come upon you in this conference and you will run like the foxes of samson in the name of jesus christ there are four dimensions of encounters that i believe from scripture every believer that intends to manifest the kingdom every believer that intends to do business with god in these last days you must contend for these dimensions of encounters they produce maturity and they produce balance in the life of the believer hallelujah very quickly i'll run through them and i want you to please pay attention the words that we speak they are spirit and life it's not just an education it's not just an intellectual communication this is not just a theological dissertation this is the ministry of the spirit hallelujah four encounters i submit to you let me tell you a little story i'm a student of scripture i study the bible by the grace of god 
but this teaching came to me by revelation i was not reading any bible the holy ghost came to me and began to open me up that there are four dimensions of encounters and that i must teach the body of christ this truth to help believers mature and really begin to prove the reality of the power of god can i tell you this a generation is gradually getting tired of religion a generation is gradually getting tired of spiritual propositions without the grace dimension to de to deliver their validity and technology has made people know that things can be proven you can say this and there are statistics to prove it it is that same hunger now people have brought it to the church to say if you claim god is god if he heals if he lifts if he blesses i am sick and tired of theory i want an experience that whose conviction will last my lifetime and if we are unable to deliver to that degree then sooner or later many people will forget the name of the lord but may god forbid it not in our lifetime are we blessed yes encounters number one the first supernatural encounter that every believer needs in this order to be relevant and to be able to host dimensions of god in your life to a territory to a generation is called an encounter with jesus the son of the living god please write it down an encounter with jesus the son of the living god john chapter 3 the bible says and verse 16 popular scripture says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the intent that whosoever believeth in him should not perish eternal damnation the word perish there does not necessarily just mean die physically eternal damnation but that we should have what the bible calls zoe the life of god everybody say encounter with jesus there are many people in church who have not met jesus there are many people around christian circles who have truly not had an encounter with jesus you can be around the things of god you can even be part of the move of god but an encounter with jesus is not corporate number one it is a personal affair those days well in the south here i think it was student union and then in the north it was fcs they would ask you do you have a personal relationship with jesus that word personal was the key word not have you been around church for a while a personal encounter with the lord jesus first john chapter 5 the epistle of john first john chapter 5 help us holy spirit first john chapter 5 we'll start from verse 11 first john 5 and 11 this is the record that god had given us eternal life and that this life is in his son next verse please it says he that hath the son hath life and he that had not the son of god had not life period so if you say you are born again then that must have been that you have encountered the son of the living god the savior of the world can i tell you this we need by the grace of god to remind a generation again that there is no other name given unto man by which men can be saved believing a man of god does not give you salvation brothers and sisters hear me believing a living church does not give you salvation believing an apostle a prophet following an apostle a prophet a teacher as important as it is you are only an effective follower you are not saved are we together according to the authority of scripture the condition for being a partaker of the life of god is not proximity with the anointing it's not proximity with church it's a personal encounter 
with the son of the living god you will think what i'm teaching is so basic and simple and everyone should know except for the fact that the day there is a day that this earth will be judged and let me tell you whoever does not have that encounter with the son of god it says i saw that the sea gave up its dead everyone gave up his dead and whosoever's name was not in the book of life was casted into the lake of fire that burned with sulfur and brimstone this he said is the second death and he said right for these things are faithful and true i don't mean to make you afraid but i tell you sincerely one day this earth will wrap up the lord jesus christ is coming we establish this in the future in in, in the morning and it's not going to be in so distant future i am convinced personally from the authority of scripture because the one sign the bible gives to characterize the coming of christ is that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all generations they don't have to receive it it there just has to be a testament that they had it and the bible says then the end will come an encounter with the son of the living god john chapter 10 and verse 10 says the thief cometh not that means you will never see the thief around any vicinity but for to steal to kill and to destroy and he said but i am come that ye may have life and that you may have that life more abundantly so the first encounter you need that starts your journey your christian experience more than church more than a pastor more than a man of god is an encounter with the son of the living god we are all sons of the living god but there is the son of the living god jesus the christ there is no other name given unto men by which we must be saved respectfully do you know that you can do a random selection around church and really ask people are you saved and you will be surprised how many people are not saved they are committed they are sincere they are not evil people but they are just not saved sincerity is not the condition to be with jesus it is salvation romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 the word is nigh thee even in thy heart and in thy mouth the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that god raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved the formula is in the next verse with the heart man believes unto righteousness then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation hallelujah there are three things that you receive for having an encounter with the son of the living god please write it according to the authority of scripture if and when you truly have an encounter with the son of the living god there are three things that you receive number one access to righteousness romans chapter 5 and verse 17 these are fundamentals of the christian faith that if not known every other dimension of truth will be standing on a wrong foundation romans 5 and verse 17 please access to righteousness for if by one man's offense death reigned by one it says much more we they which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one jesus christ righteousness great men like ew kenyon who had been a great blessing to the body of christ and still continue to bless the body of christ even though they have long gone i think he defined one of my first definitions of righteousness came from his books the ability to stand before the father's presence without a sense of inferiority condemnation and guilt that's what he defined as righteousness even though today i would say righteousness is more than just a sense of being free righteousness is actually the nature of god without righteousness you cannot receive the way the condition to have the life of god is that you have righteousness equal to that of jesus so before you receive the life of god you must receive righteousness righteousness is what qualifies you to be a partaker of the life of god it is impossible 
to have the life of God until you have righteousness are we blessed the first thing we receive from having an, a genuine encounter with the Son of God is righteousness the righteousness of the Son of the Living God at work in me that I have received it number two the second thing that we receive when we have an encounter with Jesus the Son of the Living God is access to the life of God what the Bible calls Zoe the life of God Zoe is more than eternal life please look up there are different kinds of life and some of you may have heard me teach that Zoe is not eternal life everybody has eternal life the condition for eternal life really is not being born again it's being born once you pass through the womb of a woman you have eternal life whether in this earth or beyond this earth you are still living the life is eternal when you get people saved you say where will you spend eternal life not will you you are going to spend eternal life the question is location not the possibility are we together now remember jesus we're bible students isn't it remember jesus was talking to he was giving a parable about the rich man and lazarus both of them had eternal life it was just location the man was still alive after this earth so the life jesus came to give us i know that it was translated eternal life but it's not really eternal life it's called zoe the life of god it's a quality of life the very kind of life great men like papa hagin call it the god kind of life well i respect and i believe them but revelation is progressive it's not the god kind it is the very life of god there are not many kinds it is god's life given to men are we blessed a superior kind of life this is what i get when i encounter the son of the living god now because it is spiritual in nature you may not appreciate it we are sensory so when things happen and you have a physical impact usually you would believe it but when you when you receive of his life in what you call the salvation experience usually you may not necessarily feel anything physical so it may be difficult for you to believe that a translation and an exchange just happen in the spirit but it is still the truth of scripture that anyone who encounters the son of god has the life of god please say i have the life of god number three what do you receive for having an encounter with the son of god access to the grace of god hmm. access to the grace of god access to the grace of God Ephesians chapter 1 please and verse 3 the grace of God is a powerful mystery this is my definition of the grace of God blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ the bible says who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ this is my definition of grace grace is more than just unmerited access grace is the generic name given to every spiritual blessing that is given to the believer routed through the office of the christ is called grace so anointing is grace wisdom is grace faith is grace all spiritual blessings that have been given to the saints but can only be accessed through the office of the christ is called grace when you limit your understanding of grace to just um unmerited access or being pardoned from iniquity by reason of being in christ it is very very limiting so when we have access to grace it's more than just favor uh -uh. 
that's why the bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you and then the bible says that um how, how does he put it he says god is able to make all grace i think i shared that the last time i was here the grace of god unfortunately and and lovingly speaking for most believers our our understanding of grace just has to do with the substitutionary sacrifice of christ and receiving it and then and then that's all but grace is more than that grace represents every spiritual blessing allocated for the victory of the saints but it is only routed in christ an unbeliever cannot have grace can have mercy but not grace are we blessed the grace of god only comes through the office the administrator of the grace of god is christ himself is god helping us now so if you tell me you have encountered jesus i search for this notice my choice of words access to righteousness access to the life of god access to the grace of god what does access mean potential it does not mean experience access means that the door has been opened but it is up to you to come into the experience of it for instance we have received away the life of god but ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness that is in their heart so it is true that he that had the son had life but because it is access it takes a level of spiritual illumination to come into the experience of it this is where faith is applicable so it is by grace but then through faith to become our experience are we blessed many believers continue to chant spiritual realities that the grace of god has provided and sometimes we never get to walk into the experience of it because grace gives you access and access is important but that's not what you really need what you need is an experience is god blessing us let's hurry up for the sake of time number two i pray and trust that this is blessing your heart number two the second encounter that you will need to be mighty with god in this earth and in this season is an encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit please write it down in this order an encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit mm. zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6 then he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of the lord unto joshua selman saying this destiny and this kingdom advance is not by might it's not by power but it is by my spirit saith the lord by my spirit your destiny your excelling ministry business family advancement the manifestation of the hand of god within a territory please hear me the bible says it is not by might it is not by power but it is by the spirit of god whilst it is true that the holy spirit plays an active role in the revelation of jesus the holy spirit as one of the the godhead has a separate office that an individual can encounter please listen the holy spirit is there to create conviction jesus was teaching and he said i have many things to tell you but he cannot bear them now he said how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he shall guide you into all truth is that true he will testify of me he said but the holy spirit listen to me as god has a separate office that you will need to encounter the person and the office of the holy ghost isaiah 48 and verse 6 
Isaiah chapter 48 Did I get that right? Give me Isaiah 30 and verse 21. Isaiah 30 and verse 21. It says, Thine ears shall hear a word from behind you saying, This is the way. It's someone who speaks to you. Walk ye in it and you will find rest. Walk ye in it when you turn to the right and when you turn to the left you will hear a voice saying a voice the same word is used in genesis chapter 3 and they heard the lord walking the voice of the lord walking in the cool of the day that voice is a person and even though jesus came and walked upon the earth jesus is the word the holy spirit represents the voice of god to the saints please understand this jesus christ is the word but the holy ghost represents the voice of god this is what i'm trying to establish it's very very important you understand this if you do not encounter the office and the person of the holy spirit your hearing in this kingdom will have a problem and your rest is predicated on your hearing The person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit when I started out with God I used to watch a lot of Catherine Kuhlman's videos and Benny Hinn and I would hear them cry and talk about the Holy Spirit and I felt it, it felt so strange how could you talk about someone you don't see how could you talk about someone who looks unseen but the reality the substance of what they were saying it was so real they would cry they would sob I knew they were not lying I knew there was a dimension of reality that they were operating on. Catherine Kuhlman would cry on stage and say, he's my best friend. Don't offend my best friend. Pastor Benny will continue to shout and say, ah, oh, he's the Holy Spirit until I began my journey with God. And when I was introduced to the person and the office of the Holy Spirit, my life changed. I knew hmm, that he could take a weak person, my brothers and my sisters, when the Holy Spirit holds you, he can turn you into a sign and a wonder. Many have encountered the Son of the living God. They have the life of God. But they are unable to be effective in this Christian experience because you need an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit to believers? Number one, the Holy Ghost is the revealer of the Word of God. Please write it down. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 12. Sorry, I'm hurrying up because we're working with time. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 12. But as it is written, the Bible declares, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Uh -huh. But God had revealed them. How? By the Spirit. That means if you do not have access to this spirit, you also do not have access to genuine revelation. The Holy Ghost is the revealer of the word. Please keep that scripture there. It says, for the spirit is given the exclusive ability to search all things, even the deep things of God. Verse 11. For no man for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of that man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god hallelujah it says now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god to the end that we might know revelation the things that are freely given to us from God when you see men acting as though they outsource a dimension of knowledge from another realm you are right but the bringer of that revelation is the Spirit of God that the Holy Spirit is able to fetch truths from the bowels of heaven and bring it to ordinary men and turn their lives to signs and wonders the Holy Ghost is the revealer of the word 
john chapter 16 when you read from verse 13 the bible tells us john 16 and verse 13 please give it to us that how be it when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you you see how complicated truth is it's not enough to have access to truth you must be guided because truth without guidance can still kill you it's not only a lie that kills truth unguided can also destroy Did you ever learn that the truth too can kill? He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself. Are you seeing now? Here, this scripture is the reason why the Holy Spirit conceals his presence. The Holy Spirit, I believe, according to the authority of scripture, has a real form but the reason why he conceals his form is because his assignment is to glorify jesus <laughs> are we together that he will not speak of himself and he will but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come the holy spirit is not a dove the holy spirit is not anointing oil in fact oil does not anoint oil only anoints because someone anointed anointed it i'm not against that don't, don't get me wrong the holy spirit is not water the holy spirit is not wind the holy spirit is not smoke these are just expressions of his person the holy spirit is god god in every way God in every form there is an office of the Holy Ghost and hear me dear people of God this is a call to come into that level of encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit the revealer of the word number two very quickly what is the assignment what does the encounter with the person and the whole the ministry of the Holy Spirit bring he is the confirmer of the word the Holy Spirit does not only reveal the word, he confirms the word. Isaiah 44 from verse 24, please, to 26. We're doing a little Bible study here. Isaiah 44 from verse 24 to 26. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretch forth the heavens alone, and spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, 25, that frustrated the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish, 26, let's read together, that confirmed the word of his servant, and performed the counsel of his messengers. Hear me? The Holy Spirit is the dimension of the Trinity that is responsible for manifestation. You cannot desire manifestation and neglect his office. Every provision that the word of God makes available, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes it manifest. Very powerful. So when you say be healed in the name of Jesus, you have spoken that word by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is that active dimension of the Trinity whose power goes into that sick body and begins to make biological, spiritual adjustments until that person looks like what the word of God should be. He will not stop. For many years in the body of Christ, there has been a controversy between the limit of the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. So we have people who say word and we have people who say spirit. Both of them are incomplete. I pray that God will answer that question in this short session. In the name of Jesus Christ, the ministry of the spirit as the confirmer of the word mark 16 and verse 20 mark chapter 16 and verse 20 the bible says and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following the lord walking with them when they preached and they said this is what we've brought to you from heaven 
the Holy Ghost was there with them he is with you and shall be in you walking to will and to do men of God hear me we need the Holy Spirit to walk close to us if we need real results it is the Holy Spirit that has the ability to produce supernatural results no man sustains the ability to produce results at God's dimension except assisted by the Holy Ghost we're tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this we're tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this there's gotta be more there's gotta be more the holy ghost is also the custodian of the anointing please write it down the holy ghost is the custodian of the anointing mm. isaiah 61 the spirit of the lord he said the messianic prophecy the spirit of the lord is upon me because he that spirit hath anointed me too then he begins to list everything that the anointing does to preach it takes the anointing to preach glad tidings it takes more than understanding the message of salvation to preach it takes the anointing it takes the anointing to bind up broken hearts it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives it takes the anointing to open the prison to them that are bound it takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and even the vengeance of our God it takes the anointing to comfort people who mourn it takes more than a sympathetic heart the Spirit of the Lord is upon me Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 I have power he says by the Spirit Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 but truly I am full of power not by my ability by the Spirit of the Lord it is the Holy Spirit who empowers men in this kingdom we are all ordinary except for what he does in us he reconfigures us by his power and suddenly we cease to be normal we cease to be ordinary Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 Jesus himself but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem Judea Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth you shall receive power the Holy Ghost is the custodian of the anointing just because you are born again may not necessarily expose you to the anointing it gives you access to that possibility but you need an encounter with the person and the office of the spirit i do not know one man on earth who works notably in dimensions of the anointing and the ministry of the holy spirit is strange to that individual i am yet to find one there is no man that works truly in the miraculous that works truly in signs and wonders of all forms not just in the fivefold ministry you must be exposed to the ministry of the holy spirit number three and we'll stop here for the sake of time the third encounter that you need if you must do exploits in this kingdom and manifest the reality of the kingdom is an encounter with the word of God hmm. an encounter with the word of God now please look up an encounter with Jesus as the Savior is different from an encounter with the word of God the logos of God a compendium of the mysteries the secrets the methodologies and the principles of the kingdom you must have an encounter with the word of God the living logos of God you can have an encounter with the Son of God and you have Zoe but spiritual ignorance will make you live a very fruitless Christian experience as though you were not saved 
this is where the intelligence of the saints lie their encounter with the word of god please write this down the word of god is a compendium of the mysteries the secrets the principles and the methodologies of the kingdom is called the word of god a compendium of the mysteries of the kingdom matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 it says because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven john 1 the principles the patterns the methodologies of god colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 let the word of christ he says dwell in you richly in all wisdom i wish i had time to walk this word we can spend the whole night discussing this scripture look up please it says let the word of christ dwell in you but it says let it dwell in you in all wisdom that means is the word of god dwells in you randomly it will confuse you and lead you into error the word of god must dwell in you in a way that it dwells in all wisdom if all you have is just scriptures you will misquote scriptures you will get into trouble because you the word of god is dwelling in you but not in all wisdom so it says hey while you study the bible while you climb the scriptures make sure there is a sequential arrangement of truth so that the devil will not come and manipulate what you already have and destroy you with it when satan came to jesus it was it is written that jesus already had within him but because the word of god he was the embodiment of the word dwelling in all wisdom are we blessed three things happen to you when you have an encounter with the word of god number one understanding the first miracle that happens in your life when you truly have an encounter with the logos of god is understanding luke chapter 9 mm. from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends to the god of all flesh you're my god and your name is yahweh your name is yahweh yahweh he's my king and his name is yahweh your name is yahweh yahweh Luke chapter 19 and verse 42, please. Understanding. The first miracle we receive. Luke chapter 19 and verse 42. 19 and verse 42. Jesus began to weep over Jerusalem. And he said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if thou hast known, even thou, at least in this your day, the things that belong to your peace he says but now they are hidden from you so that you cannot come into this experience you are barren of understanding and so you do not have the peace that should come as a result of understanding this is powerful understanding we all need that miracle in our lives luke chapter 24 and verse 45 luke 24 and verse 45 read it please if you're a christian one to read then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture understanding is beyond education understanding is is beyond the realm of intellectual prowess it takes the ministry of the spirit to open your understanding to the word of god then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture this is the first miracle that happens to you the second is faith when you have an encounter with the logos of god you receive faith romans chapter 10 and verse 17 romans 10 and verse 17 so then faith cometh so faith is living it can come to you it comes when you hear the word of god 
as i have an encounter with the word of god i'm inviting faith to my life faith that commands victories faith that is responsible for exploits the bible says that the just shall live by his faith and that faith comes only when i encounter the word of god romans chapter 4 i wish we had time but let's see how far we can go romans 4 from verse 19 the bible talks about the patriarch abraham it says and be not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about an hundred years neither yet the deadness of sarah's womb uh -huh. he staggered not at the promise of god so there was something for him to hold on the word of god is an anchor you can hold on to it he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but he was strong in faith giving glory to god 21 and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was also able to perform and therefore it was imputed unto him for righteousness stability is the next thing that you receive understanding faith and then stability first corinthians 15 and verse 58 it says therefore my beloved brethren paul is admonishing the church in corinth be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain he says be steadfast he says be unmovable that means when you vacillate in this kingdom is proof that your faith is not stable your faith is not alive and the word of god is not at work in you if god gives you a word you can hold on to that word and as life beats left right and center you say he told me that in the name of jesus my church will thrive in this city he told me that in the name of jesus when men say there is a casting down for me there is a lifting up it is what god said that keeps you it is what god said that keeps you what did he tell you hold on to it isaiah 33 and verse 6 tells us that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times when you find a very stable christian he has been fortified by the wisdom and the knowledge of scripture in the name of jesus i pray for you that you will cultivate such a hunger for an encounter with the word of god can i be sincere with you thank god for all the platforms that are available for believers to at least have an encounter with the word of god but you cannot give the word five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes and expect a lifetime of result and stability no sir there is a lot to know about the word of god there are keys of the kingdom not a key the truths of the kingdom that make for the victory of the saints are finite but there are many it's a body of spiritual knowledge called marvelous light they are finite but they are not just two or three or four you will need to know the principles that make for speed restoration you will need to know the principles that make for increase you will need to know the principles that make for sustainability you need to know the principles that are responsible for your warfare and your dominion you will need to know the principles that are responsible for your health and your wellness it takes time to learn those things i found your word and i did eat it and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul you must cultivate passion for the word just opening the bible in the name of jesus and you open it and just read something um then you put their eyes on zedekiah and the king of babylon and close it you won't grow that way you will never ever grow that way it takes intention you need to give the word time let me respectfully encourage us servants of the living god it takes time there are treasures that are hidden here but it will take patience to see it do you know that look up please when mary of magdala when jesus rose again different people came and they could not see him 
but the woman stayed there she was gazing at the resurrected word she stayed there until she suddenly saw a man and she said rabboni he said do not touch me it was her staying that made her to see the remaining disciples came in a hurry and they went back we've not seen him but the woman said i'm not going anywhere i will stay there are times you will stay on one verse for days you want to leave it and god says the next level of your ministry is in that scripture just keep looking just keep looking and suddenly he will isolate from all the the scriptures and just bring out three words from that scripture that becomes the next level of your lifting please don't run when you have not seen run only when you have seen from scripture an encounter with the word of god this is 2021 what have you seen what have you seen for your health what have you seen for your lifting what have you seen for your destiny we're about to pray Harusali Kataria, an encounter with the son of the living god giving me access to righteousness access to the life of god and access to the riches of the kingdom we call it grace then an encounter with the spirit of the living god access to direction access to spiritual illumination becoming for me the confirmer of the word the revealer of the word the custodian of the anointing of the spirit and then an encounter with the logos of god very powerful giving me understanding that brings faith that also brings stability this is how it starts it starts from understanding then faith is built and on the strength of faith i can find stability in my life are we together we leave the last encounter for another time but can we take a few minutes to pray please rise up on your feet I'd like you to pray these dimensions in your life let it be from the depth of your heart father here at Wafbeck 2021 I cry for an encounter by the Spirit of the Living God an encounter with the Son of the Living God an encounter with the Spirit of all grace an encounter with the logos of God someone is praying let it be from the depth of your heart your exploit this year in ministry in your family in your career the manifestation of the kingdom the advancement of the kingdom is predicated on these encounters lift your voice for a minute or two and call upon the god of heaven I declare by the spirit of the living God you are praying now you are praying now an encounter with the son of the living God an encounter with the son of the living God I have the life of God in the name of Jesus the life that is superior to the limitations of mere men I declare by the spirit of God it's not a theoretical reality I am a possessor of the life of God here and now I encounter the spirit of all grace in the name of Jesus lift your voice you are praying the spirit of all grace the revealer the revealer of the word of God the strengthener my advocate I expose myself to the fullness of his ministry even in this season now you pray and cry for an encounter with the word of god the logos of god bringing me spiritual illumination access to light the light that produces victory the entrance of my word the bible declares give it light and understanding to the simple the word of god producing faith 
the faith that moves mountains the faith that can change the impossible bringing stability to my christian experience so that i am fruitful in every good work finally i'd like you to pray father the grace to stay with your word until an encounter is established in my life the staying power the grace to stay with the word the grace to stay with the word the patience to stay with the word Yahweh, Yahweh, yes, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever, Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Spirit of the living God, we ask you to change our lives. Lift us tonight in the name of Jesus. You have anointed tonight to be an unusual encounter we pray in the name of jesus that it will be so for us tonight we declare that there is the hearing of faith and even the workings of miracles let jesus be glorified amen and amen god bless you pastor thank you please be seated hallelujah my spirit is truly fired up tonight um amen yesterday our father bishop francis waloke told us that tonight will be um a miracle service where he'll be ministering to people and i decided that i would suspend my own time to minister and just make it happen tomorrow so that we can just give him the honor to flow in the spirit is that fine hallelujah amen however i just i prayerfully thought in my spirit to just share something with us that i think is a very big key tonight as we prepare to receive of his ministry i like for your heart to be opened this that i share with you is one of the mysteries of the kingdom that is responsible for manifesting the possibilities that are in this kingdom and I pray that God will open our eyes in Jesus name I pray hallelujah I'm seeing a bed I wanted to just start sharing but now this is not I, I hope that we don't disrupt this but I have to respond to the vision that I'm seeing every time I begin to see a dove like that it is the spirit of the prophetic the spirit of prophecy just attempting to rest on someone and I'm seeing the number 11 please I know that we're observing the COVID rule so please whether or not you are an usher if someone is under the anointing just close to you just guide them gently if you have to bring them out please bring them with caution so that we still respect that but this is what I'm seeing is it okay if I just speak over that 11 people I stretch my hands please bring them out by the spirit of the living God right where you are seated I declare these 11 people by the spirit of God some of you have prayed right to the back please bring them out in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I shift you
you into that dimension spring up oh wells i pray in the name of jesus the fountains of the deep that will grant you the eyes that see and the ears that hear please bring them out by the spirit of god Please help them. Let me have them here in the front. This is a believer's conference. hallelujah please just allow me to do this and we'll get to the word there is the grace for speed that is coming on people please help them they will begin to run by the spirit let's not make this place rowdy i stretch my hands and i come here with the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic that everyone here who has been on any kind of delay at the count of three may that unction for speed come upon you one Two, three, take that grace. Please bring them. Take that grace. From the front to the back, I release that grace. You will run like Elijah and overtake the chariots of Ahab, even down to Jezreel. just begin to pray in the spirit where you are seated or standing go ahead begin to pray in the spirit it's a believers convention the bible says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty pray there is an ignition that is happening to your spirit man Let me prophesy to someone before we get to the word everything in your life that is dead or dying i stand by the spirit of grace and i speak to you that which is dead in the name of jesus talita kumi come back to life 
come back to life dead visions dead dreams dead dimensions in the spirit come back to life dead prayer life dead word life come back kabakata e kabarutskaba embreketo shalipada rekete bakata come back to life in the name of jesus please be seated if you can for all of you in front in the name of jesus i stretch my hands towards you and i pray step into new levels of grace new dimensions in the spirit that you will never forget this conference for the rest of your life in the name of jesus christ and everything that does not represent the counsel of the christ i roll it away from your life in the name of jesus christ hallelujah god bless you please if you can return back to your seat rejoicing let's let's get our pen and paper and get straight to the business of the night in the name of jesus praise the lord now i'd like you to be sensitive even whilst the word is going forth because i believe in the name of jesus that we're approaching very very prophetic sessions from tonight and all through the conference i believe that the holy spirit is doing very specific things in our lives and we must sustain the discernment to understand what he is doing are we together by the grace of god i have taken out time over the years to study miracles signs and wonders as supernatural manifestations that characterize the kingdom of god i have taken out time to study men and women all through history ancient history modern history who have been mightily used by god i have studied crusades i have studied meetings in an attempt like a spiritual archaeologist to piece together the factors that must be present in a meeting for the mighty move of god to bring miracles signs and wonders i have seen meetings well-intentioned meetings with with a desire for the manifestation of the power of god that ended up in shame and disgrace i have also seen meetings where his majesty came as though not even invited he interrupted the meetings and some of those meetings lasted for days for weeks and even months then i began to study what are the factors that must be put in place this is my message this evening to prepare our hearts so that by the time our father the bishop comes up our hearts are already prepared to receive are we blessed i discovered that for every time god shows up in a meeting the vessel that he would use to bless the people there are conditions specific spiritual conditions that that vessel must meet it is all a product of god's grace however there are conditions there is a posture that that vessel must assume to be mightily used by god are we together but my concern is really not the vessel it is the recipients of that grace by the grace of god our father the bishop is a veteran in the miraculous god has used him uh, for decades to bring the power and the grace of god so by the privilege of god's grace we are not in doubt of what god can do in and through him but the challenge now is constructing our understanding to be able to receive to the fullest that which the lord will want to do tonight are we still together and so i just thought to examine a few things that will help us and build our faith even as we prepare these truths are pillars they are the pillars of the miraculous hallelujah that every time you desire to see the miraculous work in your life and in ministry you will have to subscribe to these foundational truths the first of that pillar is called the grace of god there is something about the grace of god you must understand if you want to see the manifest power of god remember we're talking about the manifestation of his kingdom you must understand 
the grace of God Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 to 9 it says for by grace are ye saved and then it says that through faith by grace just the a part so our salvation of all sorts comes by grace and then through faith Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 is where I find my definition of grace the Bible says blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ I began to touch that yesterday that my definition of grace is not just limited to unmerited access the grace of God broadly speaking refers to every dimension of possibility that resides in God represented in the Christ available to the saints in and only through the office of the Christ is called grace so the grace of God is not limited to just a dimension his power is his grace his wisdom is his grace anointing is grace faith is grace every possibility that makes God God are we together now available to the saints only through the office of the Christ is called the grace of God this is very very important second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14 Apostle Paul was teaching and he said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost he says let it be with you his desire was that the grace of God will ever be manifest in the life of the Saints the Bible also says in 2nd Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1 it says be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ be strong in it derive your strength from that revelation the Bible says some trust in horses for their strength some chariots for their strength but now he says derive your own strength from the grace that is in the Lord Jesus Christ In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10, apologies, I'm rushing so we can do much before the time for the ministration. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. He says, But the God of all grace, uh -huh. now you watch carefully. The God of all grace, not the God of grace, all grace. That scripture immediately suggests to you that grace is dimensional. He says, All grace that means there are dimensions to the grace of god please understand this these are foundational pillars that control the manifestation of the grace and the power of god please keep that scripture it says but the god of all grace all of the dimensions of grace that can be captured in the life of the believer last year at Wafbeck, i shared about that mystery remember apostle paul teaching the church in corinth he says and god is able to make all grace abound not some all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency that on the strength of that grace you will abound unto all good works so we know from scripture that grace is dimensional this i believe is where um, there may have been an imbalance in our understanding of the grace of god to believe that the grace of god is generic applicable to all at all times is not a very accurate revelation it looks very spiritual but it is not very accurate there are dimensions of the grace of god and not all those dimensions are available to everyone under any condition please understand this let me show you what i mean from scripture titus chapter 2 please give it to us we're students of scripture titus chapter 2 from verse 11 titus chapter 2 read with me if you're a christian one to read keep that scripture there this is the dimension of grace that appears to all men the grace that brings salvation but there are other dimensions of grace that do not appear unto all men it will come by their pursuit and their alignment it is the grace of God that brings salvation that has appeared unto all men but there are other dimensions of grace that are a product of your obedience your alignment and your pursuit 
this is the reason why we are not all equally anointed although we are in christ this is the reason why our possibilities differ if if grace were generic and work for everybody at the same time there would be no difference there would be no disparity in the manifestation of the power of god in our lives are we together now so the grace of god is not generic there is a dimension of grace that was given by the mercy of God to all saints. It is the grace that appears to all men, the one that brings salvation. Are we together now? Yes. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. I wrote here a definition two definitions of grace that may interest us and then we'll touch on the second aspect and we'll pray the first definition of grace that I wrote down here is that it is a state of awareness a consciousness the grace of God is a disposition of understanding of the limitless provisions and the possibilities that are contained in God and only access through Christ the first dimension of grace is a consciousness a consciousness please understand this the consciousness of the limitless possibilities that are in God you want to walk in the miraculous you must be aware that God is unlimited the awareness of the vastness of the power the grace the possibilities that are in God is called grace it is first a consciousness a disposition of understanding that tells you your mind is involved in the manifestation of the power of God not just your spirit a disposition of understanding number two what is the grace of God it is also an empowerment resulting from that knowledge resulting from that consciousness that energizes the believer to walk and live in keeping with the conditions that make those spiritual realities manifest i apologize get the teachings are we together an empowerment resulting from that consciousness so the grace of god first is a consciousness of the limitless possibilities that are in god available to the saints through the office of the christ then that the grace of god is also the empowerment that is derived from that consciousness that there is an understanding you have and then there is an empowerment that comes from that understanding that navigates your life to walk in keeping with the conditions that make the power of God manifest is called the grace of God this is very powerful write this down please the highest revelation of the grace of God the highest revelation of the grace of God is captured in a mystery called the finished work of Christ the highest manifestation of the grace of God is captured in this mystery that we have come to know in the body of Christ as the finished work of Christ what does that mean the spiritual blessings made available to the saints on account of the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ the spiritual blessings made available to the saints on account of the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ alongside the advantage it has provided for the believer to walk in victory so when we talk of the finished work of Christ we refer to the spiritual blessings that have been made available to the Saints alongside the advantage that they now provide for us to be able to walk experientially in victory are we together the grace of God provides access to the provisions of God write it down please the grace of God provides access to the provisions of God access to the possibilities of God there is no way to have access to the possibilities of God outside of the grace of God 
we have confidence tonight that the sick will be healed we have confidence tonight that lives will be transformed we have confidence tonight why because those possibilities are true in god and the office of the christ has made it available to the saints through this mystery we call grace it is based on that revelation you can come ready to receive knowing that god is not wondering if he has the power to change your life if you do not believe this it will be difficult for you to receive doubt and fear comes when you do not have the consciousness of the vast possibilities that are in christ are we together yes if a very wealthy man calls you and says for instance i want to pay your rent the awareness of how much he has gives you confidence to not ask him an irrational question are we together now you are aware if i tell you i'll buy you a house you may look at me and say oh it's possible that he has the money for a house if i say i'll buy you a private jet hallelujah is well because somewhere in your mind you have subconsciously assessed me and felt that ah does he have the grace to go that far so when god says i will lift you and you doubt your doubt is speaking a language god are you that mighty are you that great the grace of god is not just an empowerment it is first a consciousness and then the empowerment that is derived from that consciousness write this down please is god helping us the grace of god provides access to the provisions of god but does not automatically make them manifest on earth now this is where my teaching really starts that the responsibility of the grace of god is not manifestation is access please understand this the limit of the grace of god is providing access it will take another agency to sponsor manifestation if all that you know is just the grace of god you may never experience manifestation you will have access you will have dreams and visions of spiritual possibilities that have happened in your life but they may never be made manifest here and now and your desire is not just access your desire is manifestation because it is only when spiritual realities are made manifest that the christ is glorified are we together now let your light so shine before men the bible says that they may see your good deeds and then glorify your father in heaven the bible says the word became flesh that word that resided in the realm of the spirit became flesh it was manifest we beheld the glory of god even as of the begotten full of grace and truth now this is where many believers get stuck as far as the equation that governs the manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom are concerned they are conscious of the grace of god i know god can do it i know god will do it what is there lord i know you are able to raise someone from a wheelchair i know you are able to bless you are right but you are wrong because even though that is true that is an incomplete spiritual understanding just resting in the fact that god can do it will not make him do it the grace of god provides access everybody shout access one more time shout access access refers to potential that this is now yours but it is up to you to know how to receive it and to make it manifest the grace of god every time i have the opportunity to minister if the lord tells me now that there's someone who is sick what gives me the audacity to be able to speak i am aware there is a consciousness that the one who is talking to me has the power to make what he has said come to pass hallelujah the grace of god number two let me just share the second pillar very quickly Let me call it the faith that works bible faith let's discuss a bit on the subject of faith there's been all kinds of teachings about faith and how it works and 
respectfully speaking this is a believers convention so i'm at liberty to challenge us our lives and the lack of results in our lives clearly show that there may be something about the understanding of faith that is not really there because if it is the faith of god it truly works are we together now the bible tells us very clearly from habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4 that the just shall live by his faith romans 1 17 says the same thing galatians 3 11 hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38 all of these scriptures tell us that those who have been justified in this kingdom that our modus operandi our our the way that we live and function in this kingdom is by faith so faith is not for preachers faith is even is not for those in need it is a a spiritual mystery and a principle for our living the bible also tells us that like the word of god romans 10 and verse 19 it says so then faith comes faith cometh." romans chapter 10 am i right 17 i meant to say forgive me he says so then faith cometh everybody say faith cometh that means faith is like a messenger it can come to you faith has mobility it can leave a location and come to your life faith like the word comes that faith comes when you hear and when you hear and understand even by the word of god faith is living faith is active let me define faith this is my definition of faith and this is consistent with scripture i define faith as the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of who god is and the integrity of his person the name of that action is faith the name of the action that you take based on your conviction of who god is and the integrity of his person faith is not just your believing your believing is part of the equation of faith but that in itself is not faith you have to understand this faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who god is and the integrity of his person the integrity of his word look up please there are two attributes of god that are responsible for imparting faith in the believer not every attribute of god imparts faith there are two attributes of god according to scripture that are responsible for imparting faith number one his integrity please write it down the first attribute of god that is responsible for imparting faith bible faith in the believer is the awareness of his integrity please say his integrity numbers chapter 23 please and verse 19 numbers 23 and verse 19 read with me please if you can see it projected ready one to read god is not a man that he should lie uh-huh neither the son of man that he should repent hath said or had he spoken and shall he not make it good this is a scripture that is a manifesto of the integrity of god he said yes god is not a man men can lie are we together now but he said god is not a man it is not within his his he is not limited by that weakness he is god he is not a man god is not a man that he should lie so you have this at the back of your mind that the one who is speaking to you is one who does not lie genesis 21 verse 1 and 2 genesis 21 the bible says and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did unto sarah as he has spoken this is integrity he said it and he did it he visited sarah please keep the scripture there as he had said 
and he did unto sarah as he has spoken verse 2 for sarah conceived and bare abraham a son in his old age at the set time which god had spoken to him someone shout integrity comes from the word integer the quality of being the same the quality of being consistent the quality of being unbendable you can trust god because of this quality of integrity god is a god of integrity when he speaks he is worth believing hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 the apostle was teaching and he said for without faith it is impossible to please him that everyone who comes to god must come believing that he exists and then number two that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him so you come here tonight believing that god exists you are not hoping does he really exist can he really come in for me the bible says you must come believing that he exists and then that he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him are we blessed you will never have bible faith when you are not conscious of god's integrity the bible is a compendium of his integrity he said many things to people and he did it he said many things to people and he did it he said impossible things and he still did it god is a god of integrity this becomes the foundation so everything he said he would do you know that he has the integrity enough to do it everybody say integrity number two the second attribute of god that is responsible for producing bible faith in a believer is his ability it's one thing to have integrity but you may not have ability there are many sincere people who have integrity but they do not have the ability the financial wherewithal the intellectual wherewithal even the physical might our god is not only a god with integrity he also has ability someone say ability second chronicles chapter 20 please from verse 6 we're reading down to nine but the verse of emphasis is verse six second chronicles read with me please ready read and said "O lord god of our fathers art thou not god in heaven thou rulest not the kingdoms of the heathen and in thy hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand you cancer is part of none COVID-19 is part of none. All kinds of limitations come under this group. The Lord, are you not so powerful such that none is able to withstand you? Next verse. We are reading to verse 9. Art not thou God who didst drive the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name the last verse if when evil cometh upon us as the sword judgment or pestilence or famine we stand before this house and in thy presence for thy name is in this house and cry unto thee in our affliction and then thou will hear and help because of your might his ability God is not only a God of integrity he is a God of ability Jeremiah 32 and verse 17 I trust that this is building your faith because truly your life must change in the name of Jesus Christ read with me our Lord God behold thou has made the heavens and the earth not just with your intelligence it took more than intellect to create you made it with your great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing that is too hard for you over my life over my family someone prophesy lord there is nothing that is too hard even tonight and all through this conference 
there is nothing there is nothing someone prophesy in one minute our lord god behold you have made the heavens and the earth it doesn't take you too long to make my life if you made the heavens and the earth you can make my life you can make my family hallelujah apostle peter began to give us this revelation in second peter second peter chapter one we'll read from verse two to four he said grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god and jesus our lord verse three please read with me according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue verse 4 says whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these these manifestations we might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust his divine power everybody say his divine power so the giver in this kingdom is his power mm. his divine power hath given us the giver of healing his divine power the giver of lifting his divine power the giver of new levels his divine power Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 now unto him the Bible says look at what you are reading now unto him he would have stopped there but he says that is able we are talking ability here he is able to do he is able to do he is not just able to say there are people who can say but they do not have the power to do it says now unto him he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask and he moves to the realm of our desire to the realm of our imagination and he says still dare me let your mind as fast as it is dare me he says he can do above all that we ask and all that we think according to the power that worketh in us he is able to do my god is able to do just what he says he will do he's gonna fulfill every promise to me don't give up on god cause he won't give up on you if they won't. Oh, 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 oh. is the God of heaven listen I'm imparting faith in you we're about to pray his integrity his ability these are the attributes of God that impart Bible faith so when I come I come believing Lord I come believing that you are a God of integrity but then you are also a God that is all-powerful the contest in Egypt was a display of ability the gods of Egypt they would bring something and God would come and counter it the last of it was the mystery of blood and he took the firstborn and Pharaoh said who is this who is this he said who is like unto thee oh God above the gods there is none for you to conclude there must have been a context creator of the universe what can't you do what can't you do jesus one more time sing it with understanding creator of the universe what can't you do what can't you do jesus is a name above every other name 
You're the name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change, Jesus? You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. Just the voices. You are able. Listen to what you are saying. Great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. Did you not read in this Bible that men slept overnight as prisoners and by the next day they were princes? The ability of God. Did you not read in this Bible? that men who were appointed unto death the exploits are archived in Hebrews chapter 11 it says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen he said for by it elders obtain a good report through faith it says we understand that the cosmos the world were framed by the word of God it says time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions I believe him you're not a man no you're not a man you're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, oh. You're not a man, oh. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you, Jesus, no one like you. God of everything, no one like you. Let's sit down for a minute. Sheila Barol says, Yahaska. Please help those under the anointing. I tell you, there is faith in this place. Hera Shalako Sadi Bahashia. The God that we serve. Is a God of integrity if he says he will heal you I assure you he will if he says I will lift you I assure you he will hear me oh man of God if he says this is the year when your ministry will find visibility from any location on earth dare to believe him dare to believe him if he says this is a year that your business will rise don't be like the hidden be like Abraham our father of faith the Bible says he considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb listen please sit down let me just tie a few things I have worked with God a bit by the grace of God I can tell you when God speaks he means what he's saying five minutes to the manifestation of the word it will still not look like it I have seen God do things in my life I've seen God do things in our ministry I have seen God do things in the lives of people I look forward to when we get to heaven and we'll have a privilege to talk with him I want to ask him a question and I'll say your majesty who are you who exactly are you for the more I know you truly the more I want to know you Jesus for 
for me it's not a special number there is a way that god moves through your life when julius berger builds they sign their signature so you are not confused who built it there are things that when god does in our lives he leaves his signature he does it in a way that no man can confuse it help that lady i'm seeing oil being poured on that lady in the name of jesus christ my dear you are stepping into a new dimension in the spirit this is what i see the god who has integrity if god did not have integrity to be risky to be a preacher what gives you the audacity to stand and claim people can be transformed and claim their burdens can be lifted you would dare them to bring the sick you would dare them to bring their burdens who do you think you are the god of integrity the god of ability it is fearful to see the god of wonders at work can i tell you this truly we have seen miracles truly we have seen signs and wonders but i pray that this generation will see god in his full strength has listen has god done something to you that you did not even have the courage to celebrate it you are afraid of your own miracle you go back and and watch like a spectator i'm not motivating you this is the dimension god is bringing you into did the bible not say when the lord turned again the captivity of zion when the lord he said we were like them that dream he didn't say we were like them who were happy that god can do something that you don't even have the time to rejoice yet our mouths were filled with laughter the testimony even reached the hidden and that the hidden too had to commend that the lord had done great things for us he said the lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad then he says turn again our captivity like the streams of the south or the negative tonight and all through this conference i came to challenge you mark chapter 11 from verse 22 mark 11 22 goodness jesus answering them said wafbeck lagos covenant nation have faith in god have faith in god have faith in god it's an instruction have faith in god seeing then that the just lives by faith have faith in god 23 for verily i say unto you that means i place my integrity on what i'm about to say whatsoever that whosoever shall say to this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt where does doubt come from an inaccurate understanding of his ability and his integrity he says but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he said he shall have whatsoever he saith. 24 here is the formula therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire take note it starts with a desire when ye pray your faith equation is not complete until prayer is somewhere in between it says believe that you receive it and then you shall have it you will never have what you have not received receiving is in the realm of the spirit your having is the manifestation anything you ever have is because you received it many people never have because they don't know how to receive you don't receive physically no you receive when you agree with god then the manifestation comes what things soever ye desire when ye pray when ye pray believe that you receive it 
are we together believe believe father i trust you that 2021 will be an extraordinary year it is a desire now that i pray in my prayer and my confession i believe that i receive it we're going to pray some prayers and trust god for grace i wish i had time i would have shown you a few keys the end of faith let me say this is an action of obedience your faith does not just stop at confessing the word listen to me god is committed to you at the point of action not just at the point of believing the point of action deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it says it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to observe and to do to observe and to do to observe and to do not just to think not just to wish to observe there is a doing all his commandments which i command you this day that the lord thy god will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 says that this blessing shall come upon you and they will overtake you joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 he says and this book of the law he says shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do everybody said to do to do the doing part is where many believers do you know when you meditate on scripture your meditation is not complete until you find your participatory condition you want to be blessed it is true that scripture makes that provision for believers to be blessed but merely knowing it and confessing and waiting there will only end you in futility the end of your meditation is knowing your participatory role for instance there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty for instance the diligent hand shall be made fat are we together now for instance the beauty and the power and the excellency of wisdom it says by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness just knowing that god wants to prosper me will keep you frustrated you must know the participatory conditions are located for activating that dimension of grace and if our god is for us then who could ever stop us and if our god is with us what can stand again what are you turning to wine open the eyes of the light there's no one like you none like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you That's the God we serve My God is greater my God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. My God. So your assignment, through your diligence and by the ministry of the Holy Ghost, you will search the promises of God the garden of scripture and find the truths that connect to the dimension of God you want to see manifest and you meditate upon it until you find your participatory role God already knows what he needs to do it is you that needs to know what you do having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your own obedience is complete John 13 and verse 17, we're praying. 
if you know these things it says happy are ye if you do them doing has power doing is where you commit god at the point of doing it is not everything that there is the dimension of god's grace that empowers you to do you do the doing but it's just that it's not by your strength hallelujah i wrote something here the keys to producing bible faith number one meditation number two prayer number three confession of scripture number four actions of obedience number five thanksgiving number six patience i give you an unbeatable formula for manifesting spiritual realities i'll take it again number one meditation it says meditate upon these things give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all number two prayer according to mark eleven twenty four, 24 that what things soever ye believe whatsoever you desire when you pray number three confession psalms 107 verse 2 it says let the redeemed of the lord say so let the redeemed of the lord say so not wish so not think so say so verbalize that you are redeemed let the healed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so let the lifted of the lord say so hallelujah isaiah 43 and verse 26 still on confession it says declare ye put me in remembrance and let us plead together declare ye thou that declare thou that thou mightest be justified your words play a role in the faith equation then actions of obedience until you act in obedience you have not committed god this is where many well-meaning and sincere believers continue to frustrate their journey to manifesting faith then thanksgiving philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 thanksgiving did you know that thanksgiving is a powerful part of manifesting faith be careful or anxious for nothing the bible says but in everything by prayer and supplication garnished with thanksgiving let your request be made unto god do you know that when you thank god is an act of faith lord i thank you i give you praise i know that this is coming I, I celebrate the manifestation i thank you and then patience hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. it says and be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience when you do not find these things don't follow that result you must see faith and patience there are times that jesus would perform a miracle you would see the bible will say immediately there are times he would give instructions that were time dependent when he there were times he would tell someone stand up take your mat and go away there are times he would tell them go and show yourself to the priest the bible says as they went as they obeyed him do you know what it meant for them to go while they were leprous if they had met the priest leprous that would be the end of them fix um six jars full of water he said fetch that water go to the ruler ah what a risk imagine those who are going and say who leads the way because these rulers are testy when a ruler is testy you don't play games with them you are carrying a jar of water the bible says as they went as they went so the man of god can declare to you and say lift your right hand and say jesus and you can stand and say what is all this nonsense now are you are you going to heal me or not and you find out you miss that miracle because there will always be instructions now man go and watch seven times and now man got embarrassed and said why would you send me to jordan there are other rivers and the servants and the maid advised him and said no 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 please go and do what he said to do if he had bathed six times he would still go back leprous the power of god was waiting for obedience to be complete not even the sixth time brought the miracle you would think at the sixth time he would have started seeing recovery he didn't see anything until the seventh time 
we're about to pray are you ready for tonight please rise up on your feet everyone say after me in the name of Jesus please shout it say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare tonight that the Word of God is producing miracles in my life lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray I decree and declare by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit the Word of God is producing results in my life the Word of God is producing results in my family the Word of God is producing results in the name of Jesus don't be careless don't be casual let your hearts be open hallelujah hallelujah say in the name of Jesus I decree and declare every manifestation of unbelief in my heart the Lord rebuke you lift your voice and begin to pray they limited God in the wilderness by saying can God make a table in the wilderness lift your voice and pray I rebuke unbelief I rebuke unbelief by the power of the Holy Ghost I rebuke unbelief in the name of Jesus hallelujah two more prayer points in one minute I like you to verbalize everything you want to see the Lord do in your life tonight and all through this conference listen there are no assumptions in the spirit God gave you a will and until you verbalize in prayer you cannot just assume that God wants to answer you the Bible says call upon me and I will answer and I will show you the Lord is nigh them that call upon him lift your voice in one minute father supernatural speed in the name of Jesus breakthrough in my family speed over my destiny increase and multiplication in ministry longevity and health and cure lift your voice and pray what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that you receive and thou shall have believe that you receive and thou shall have believe that you receive and thou shall have hallelujah praise the Lord Jesus was speaking and he said if you've been evil speaking to the fathers if you've been evil know how to give good gifts that means true fatherhood is measured in giving you know a real father by his benevolence his open-handedness and he says when you pray come to God saying Abba father my father you are a giver you are not a withholder so I stand in that confidence knowing you are a giver the Bible says he that told you have not asked for anything he says ask that you may receive to the end that your joy listen you don't need to receive to have joy but you need to receive for your joy to be full are we together now you can have joy even when you do not have a manifestation of anything but you cannot have the fullness of joy the fullness of joy happens at the instance of your receiving that which you desire is someone ready to pray Lord perfect my joy tonight give me testimonies testimonies that bring me the fullness of joy testimonies that produce the fullness of joy lift your voice and pray let it be from the depth of your heart hallelujah let me add one more prayer point we are going to pray for our father the bishop and say Lord adorn him with your power like never before that mighty signs and miracles will be wrought through him in the name of your holy son that you will stretch your hands to heal to deliver lift your voice in one minute and speak lift your voice in one minute and speak
father we're here again and we ask that you bless us thank you for your word thank you for its power to enlighten to save to heal to deliver to lift to bless to restore to advance we thank you for the potency of your word and i ask oh god that our hearts are open to receive speak to us again and cause us to hear your word in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you please be seated i really want to appreciate pastor thank you so so much for the privilege and the opportunity to bring the word of god even at a time like this and um the lord placed very strongly in my heart to share with us for the time that we have available a very powerful concept and then i hope that as god grants grace we'll at least be able to speak over our lives in addition to that which the lord has done very touched to hear the testimonies happening around the world already miracles are proof that god is in the midst of his people he says the lord in the midst of his people is mighty hallelujah praise the name of the lord i'll be teaching on the kingdom just for a few minutes and then we'll trust the lord to pray matthew chapter 6 please and verse 9 this was jesus teaching at what we call the beatitudes he was mentoring the disciples who would later become apostles of the lamb and he was teaching them on prayer matthew chapter 6 we we'll read from verse 8 let's rush because of time it says do not be like them for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask and then verse 9 he says after this manner therefore pray he didn't say by this recitation follow this formula he was talking about a formula not necessarily the chanting of the same words verbatim although that is profitable but the idea is not just reciting what was written understand that there is a protocol to prayer he says approach prayer with this understanding our father which art in heaven then he says hallowed be your name verse 10 thy kingdom come in other words let the kingdom of god be the focal point of your prayer of your desire because many of the needs you would later ask are there only because the kingdom has not come are you getting the point now so he's teaching that in praying let me save you myriads of prayer requests by focusing on that which is central that your kingdom come because if your kingdom truly comes there are many other requests that you may not need to ask are we together now thy kingdom come and then he tells you how the kingdom should come by thy will being done the kingdom of god comes everywhere his will is done and he says let it be done in earth not on earth in earth the first earth being you not just the territory let it be done in earth this earthen vessel let your kingdom come in this earth and then across every territory daniel chapter 7 and verse 27 daniel chapter 7 and verse 27 and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven the bible says shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him this is a verdict that a time will come creation will be compelled to see the reality of the life the power and the kingdom of god one more scripture first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 
the apostle is teaching us and he says you are a chosen generation say amen, amen. he calls us a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people he says mandated to show forth the praises of him is the word doxazo the displaying of the excellency and the glory of a man a king he says that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so he calls us a chosen generation he calls us a royal priesthood mandated to show the dominion the power the excellence of the kingdom the message of the kingdom is very important now the gospel is broadly theologically speaking broken into seven facets and one of it is called the gospel of salvation when you teach the gospel of salvation in that gospel the father is the giver the ex the, the 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 giver of love to a depraved creation jesus christ is the mediator and the savior man is the recipient of that that act of kindness so the the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus the son to man first and then the entire creation are we together now to the end that whoever believes that message receives the life of god this is the gospel of salvation but there is the gospel of the kingdom when you come to the gospel of the kingdom jesus is no longer savior jesus is king man is no longer a weak and beggarly person man is an ambassador a witness are we together now the gospel of salvation man is a helpless personality awaiting the act of benevolence from a god who is unlimited but the gospel of the kingdom is a gospel that reflects the glory and the power of god it is man's gift back to god as a show of gratitude for all that he had done so we are witnesses we are ambassadors we are communicators of the power the grace that resides in this kingdom what is the kingdom the kingdom refers to the fullness of the life the culture the power the reality that resides in god when you talk about kingdom you refer to a culture a life a dimension of reality that is contained in god god's own possibility now you would find the word kingdom of heaven and kingdom of god interchangeably in the bible let me just um bring some light there and then we'll, we'll, we'll just continue very quickly the kingdom of god generally talks about every sphere of um every every span where the influence of god can find expression that includes heaven that includes the earth that includes hell that includes the lake of fire everywhere the kingdom of god can ext the influence of the father can extend to is called the kingdom of god there is no record in scripture that satan created hell there is no record in scripture that satan created the lake of fire it is god's kingdom he says where can i hide from your presence he said so everywhere the influence of god can reach is called the kingdom of god but the kingdom of heaven is that portion of the kingdom of god where men have allowed his influence his governing influence to find expression experientially that is the kingdom of heaven are we together yes so when the bible says the kingdom of heaven has come it means the culture the life of heaven has found expression within a territory it is God's design that his influence finds expression across every heart and across every strata of human activities that is the only way that he becomes king of kings and lord of lords in experience are we still together so
so when the bible says thy kingdom come it means your governing influence your culture your way of life let it come first in my life and then across every territory every strata of human activities write this down please i wrote something down here the primary tool for kingdom come the primary tool for what we have come to know in the body of christ as kingdom advance the primary tool allocated for the expression of the kingdom is called dominion through influence write it down please dominion through influence this is the only way the governing influence of the father and of jesus will permeate the hearts of men and extend to every strata of human activities if we are talking about manifesting the kingdom in experience then that will only happen by dominion that comes through influence write that word influence down is a very very powerful and important word because you see in africa the context respectfully speaking the context of christianity that we received in africa and then you know even for a very long time in this nation was the evangelical dimension of christianity and the focus is establishing the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men but we neglected the territory are we together so you find out that christ is enthroned in the heart of men but the territory is hostile to the purposes of god and the kingdom of god cannot come with god just being lord in the hearts of men alone he has to be lord over the cosmos the system so you can have individuals who are born again well-meaning but there is a system that would not bow to the name of the lord and our assignment is to embrace the kingdom in our own lives and compel our system to also call upon the name of the lord if you're with me say amen, amen. we have failed woefully in our assignment as believers if all we end up doing is just getting people saved and born again alone that is priority but that's not the only assignment it says go ye into all the world he did not say go ye around into enter a system and influence that system are we together now mm. what is influence write this down influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindset and the convictions of a person and a territory is called influence the capacity to have an effect on the mindset and the convictions of a person your life will always revolve around the direction of your convictions and whoever controls your convictions controls your life are we together now everything that happens in society today is a report card reflecting how much the convictions of people have come under the influence of a few people globally speaking our sociological sphere has been influenced by only a handful of people the earth has over probably now up to eight billion people or thereabout and you can imagine that of all those people less than one percent of the entire human race is influencing the mindset influencing the conviction of people families communities territories and if those influencers do not call upon the name of the lord that territory is in trouble it has nothing to do with your personal conviction if the territory does not call upon the name of the lord you will still pay for it are we together for instance when you say respectfully speaking that africa is suffering different levels of corruption you may not be corrupt as an individual but because you are immersed in a territory that carries that anthem you have to pay the price for it so it's not enough for christ to be enthroned in the hearts of men we must we must sustain the formula that extends his influence to our territory and i pray in the name of jesus that in our lifetime we'll see our nation and we'll see this continent call upon the name of the lord amen. if you're with me say amen, amen. are we blessed yes, say influence. influence mark chapter 1 please we'll start our reading from verse 21 
it's a long reading let's see where we can get to mark chapter one the bible says and they went into capernaum and straightway on the sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught uh-huh and they were astonished at his doctrine the bible says for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes 23 and there were in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out let us alone he said what have we to do with thee jesus of nazareth this is jesus preaching around now art thou come to destroy us i know thee who thou art the holy one of god and jesus rebuked him and said hold your peace and come out of him and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice he came out of him be patient and the bible says they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what is this what new doctrine is this for with authority commanded he even unclean spirits and they do obey him verse 28 and immediately immediately not later immediately what happened his fame spread abroad throughout the region round about galilee look at this immediately 29 the bible says and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of simeon and andrew and james and john uh-huh but si simon's wife lay sick of fever and anon they tell him of her I love Jesus and he came and took her by the hand no waste of time no long story no explanation straight to the point the revelation of the glory of God and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto him and at evening when the Sun did set they brought unto him notice he did not go to look for them they had heard about the exploits of the father wrought through the son and the bible says they brought unto him all that were diseased all them that were possessed with devils and all the city everybody say all the city i don't know your definition of influence but this looks to me like influence all the city was gathered at the door not at the stadium at the door they were willing to go through that level of convenience inconvenience i meant to say to gather at the door because there was someone who was a revelator of the reality of the power the grace the culture of the kingdom next verse and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him 35 and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place to pray he left them to go and pray but because of the power of his influence verse 36 the people would not let him be and simon and they that were with him followed him may this be your testimony verse 37 and when they found him they said unto him all men seek for thee this is influence not your tribesmen not educated men not your age range not your age group all men there is a dimension of spiritual reality that when you carry all men will seek for you they will inconvenience themselves and go through whatever kind of hurdle they have to cross because they have discerned that the kingdom has come upon your life adonai you're the lamb of god you are worthy worthy of my praise king of kings lord of lords let your kingdom reign in my life adonai it's a powerful prayer Adonai let your kingdom come is a prayer of a generation crying for his glory let your kingdom come yeah let your kingdom reign let your kingdom reign in my life, Adonai, 
You're the Lamb of God. You are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. Listen, the days of begging creation to listen to what we have to say is coming to an end. There is a dimension of glory. There is a dimension of power. There is a revelation of the kingdom that is coming upon the body of Christ in these days. The prophet Micah cannot speak it. He said in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above every other mountain and every other hill and that the nations will flow to it. They will say to one another, come, let us go to the mount of the Lord, to the house of Jacob, for he will teach us his ways. My kingdom come. influence is powerful that is the only way we can cause the mindset the thinking and the convictions of a territory to bow to the lordship of christ let me ask you a question imagine for instance that michael jackson before he died said jesus is lord do you know even if it were a mistake he will win more souls than many crusades at once because a man of influence said something do not do not undermine the power of influence the way we speak the way we dress the way we think our revelation of success our revelation of failure all of this have come as a result of a proposition that has been sold to us through the years Are we blessed I came from a very a very core evangelical background and for many years our focus was you know saving sinners and that's very profitable please understand what I'm saying but then we discovered that whilst individuals were getting saved our territory was not safe because one person sitting in the corridor of power can manipulate a policy that seems to override the spiritual convictions of people and i said something is wrong with our theology an intelligent god will not create this kind of system and so i found out that in addition to evangelism there was a dimension of influence that we had ignored the sincere people who led us to jesus christ taught us that any con any desire for influence was carnal any desire for influence was satanic and so in our loyalty to the theology that we received we ignored opportunities that will bring us to the lamb light for the sake of his majesty are we blessed the opportunity that will help us to rise to dimensions where we'll be able to mentor nations and mentor kings and bring the counsel of god to nobles we ignore those opportunities but we thank god for the privilege that he's given us every territory has the mind control systems the kings the captains of industry the men and women who sit in the position of authority and let me tell you whoever sits in that position influences the people the spirit of the antichrist we see it exemplified or personified in the person of jezebel jezebel is a is a woman who captures the spirit of the antichrist and the character of jezebel is that every time she shows up she looks for government she looks for the place of power to sit because it is easy to frustrate the prophets of God when you are sitting with the king. Are we together? With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything, with everything we will shout forth your praise 
i believe that in my lifetime our generation will not disappoint god i believe that we are that generation in the name of jesus that will will cause the counsel of god to be established first in the hearts of men but the system will know that there are witnesses who walked upon this earth influence influence is not just a carnal search for fame listen do not confuse what i'm teaching you there are people who have an ambition that does not have kingdom come in it what qualifies what what the difference between a vain ambition and a desire to represent jesus is the motivation behind it for the believer your motivation is your kingdom come your will be done this is why i desire growth your kingdom come your will be done this is the anthem of the believer that everything that motivates our life the energy that drives us the labor that we do in the spirit sociologically speaking and otherwise is motivated by this one principal motivation that the christ be revealed that the christ be glorified that's it every other blessing that comes whilst we seek to establish that we receive with thanksgiving but that our primary motivation is not becoming a great man becoming a great woman that's 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 too small that's too small a motivation let me share with you what i call five pillars of influence if you master this that i teach you i stand by the authority of the living god and i tell you your life will never be small you will rise to levels and dimensions in the spirit where god can do great things with you please look up before we write did you know that even the revelation of god to men is not just dependent on their secret place and their passion for him is dependent on the position of influence that they occupy there are some things god cannot show you because you are not seated in a position of significance enough let me give you an instance joseph is there in the dungeon joseph who is the interpreter of dreams but he did not have the influence to do anything about it so god had to make do with pharaoh to show him that famine was coming the dream to pharaoh did not come from the devil it came from god because only pharaoh had the influence let us not make god have to use the hidden because we have not risen to positions of authority let's not get to points where people who do not name the name of the lord start having visions about the revival because they have the power to cause change thank god for our prayer and fasting thank god for our night vigils but hear me there is a higher call in the spirit to rise to positions of influence thy kingdom come there are five pillars that i've seen from scripture and i've seen from the life of true kingdom ambassadors men and women dead and some alive today who have been mighty agents of kingdom come models for us to follow the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise are you ready pillar number one very quickly growth and transformation the first pillar that is responsible for the revelation of influence or the revelation of the kingdom through influence is growth and transformation Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the Bible says and Jesus grew or increased in wisdom in stature in favor with God and with men when men grow influence is close to them growth and transformation sustaining superior beliefs look at me you will never be able to do much with god no matter how well intentioned you are if you do not trust god to replace some of the faulty belief systems that have come from culture come from our past come from our failures regardless what your background has been i sympathize with you but if you want to do business with god you must subscribe to a superior belief system a superior belief system is not an educated belief system System. is the belief system that is consistent with the ways of God there are many 
intellectual belief systems and they have their role to play but we're talking of the mind of christ philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 when you read it says to permit this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a mental disposition that jesus had that made the holy spirit comfortable living in him psalm 78 when you read from verse 41 the bible says they limited the holy one they limited him in the in the wilderness they turned back they tempted god they limited the holy one they said can god make a table in the wilderness we must trust god listen superior living comes from superior belief systems if your belief systems the 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 one of the primary ministries of the holy spirit is not just to produce miracle signs and wonders that's important but the major assignment of the holy spirit in the believer's life is to culture him to a a dimension where he begins to think like christ growth and transformation pillar number two let's hurry up the second pillar that governs influence is value and productivity please write it down value and productivity exodus chapter 31 when you read the first five verses the bible talks about bezalel talks about a man in whom the wisdom of god and in knowledge that he was uh, a man who was skilled in all manner of workmanship you read to verse five productivity and value unfortunately you do not hear this emphasized in church value and productivity proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16 the bible says the gift of a man can make room for him he says and that it is able to bring him not before mere men before great men the gift of a man is like a lift it can take you from ground floor and take you right to the place of destiny that you ought to go remember our motivation it's not just self-aggrandizement no our motivation is to be able to rise to the platforms that give us an opportunity to represent his purposes and influence the mindset the convictions of individuals and of territories are we blessed value and productivity first kings chapter 7 please 13 and 14 years ago when god showed me this scripture it changed my life completely it, it destroyed mediocrity from my life completely first kings chapter 7 it says and king solomon this was the building of the temple king solomon sent and fetched out hiram out of tyre the economic hub of the dead world the bible gives us a little background about that young man hiram he says he was a widow's son from the tribe of naphtali he says and his father was a man of tyre a worker in brass the bible records that he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to walk all works of brass the bible says and he came to king solomon and wrought all his work when you serve kings you will receive the reward of kings is god blessing us this morning yes, mm. value and productivity it is important that believers are not only faithful church goers faithful church workers we must trust god to rise to a level of value productivity and competence that will dumbfound principalities and powers is one of the pillars of influence show me a man that is valuable show me a man that is competent show me a man that is productive i show you a man who mediocrity will never be found around him are we blessed value and productivity the third pillar hmm. wisdom and excellence the third pillar of influence is wisdom and excellence daniel chapter 5 please we'll read from verse 12 to 15 daniel chapter 5 from verse 12 to 15 this is daniel for as much as an excellent spirit the bible says and knowledge and understanding interpreting of dreams showing of hard sentences dissolving of doubts were found in the same daniel whom the king named belshazzar 
now let daniel be called and he will show the interpretation we are reading to verse 15 then daniel was brought in before the king and the king spake unto daniel are thou daniel which are the children of the captivity of judah whom the king my father brought out of jerry i have even heard of thee influence right to the palace the report of daniel got there do you know words are powerful they can immortalize your presence you can be in one location and yet the glad tidings of what god is doing in your life can spread all across the globe when daniel came please keep that scripture he was received because his good works let's go back to verse 13 had gone ahead of him okay verse 14 now i have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom there is a kind of wisdom called excellent wisdom it says oh god our god how excellent not just how great how excellent is your name 15 and now the wise men and the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof but they could not show the interpretation of the thing a wise man when you read chapter 6 from verse 1 the first three verses chapter 6 of Daniel it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom we're reading to verse 3 and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was what first that the princes might give account to them and the king should have no damage then this daniel not another one this joshua selman this covenant call your name i am I, i'm calling my own name there was preferred above the presidents so someone can be higher than a president someone can be higher than the princes why because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over not the house the whole realm influence that comes through wisdom and excellence are we blessed the bible says in ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 paul mentoring the church in ephesus he was talking about the church the ecclesia that spiritual strategy that god invented by his wisdom to bring the kingdom to this side of his of his uh, of his of his fair this 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 side of of earth which is which is a part of his kingdom he invented a strategy and he called that strategy the church the church is a strategy like you invent a vaccine to solve a problem the church is a spiritual strategy it's more than a people it's more than a gathering it's more than a location it's more than just a collective group of believers the church the ecclesia is a spiritual strategy please give us that scripture ephesians 3 and verse 10 to the intent this is why the strategy was designed to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the multi-sided wisdom of god the manifold wisdom of god are we blessed yes wisdom and excellence do not downplay this you will never be able to rise to a level of kingdom influence that can bring the reality of the power and the glory of god if you lack wisdom and if you do not sustain the spirit of excellence the powerful thing about these pillars is that you don't have to be born with them through your alignment and through your hunger and through your press taking advantage of the grace of god you can step into these things that means you can walk into something you were not born with so there are no excuses say in the name of jesus I receive, grace I receive grace for wisdom, for wisdom. And, excellence. and excellence next pillar please the fourth pillar that controls influence in this kingdom is wealth and abundance write it down and think about it while you are writing wealth and abundance let me show you two disturbing scriptures Ecclesiastes 
in fact let's start with proverbs 22 we'll read verse 2 then we'll rush to verse 7 i wonder why these scriptures are in the bible look up please ready let's read together the rich and the poor meet together look at this the lord is the maker of them all what kind of statement in the name of honesty is this he would have just said human beings meet together god is creator but he now said the rich and the poor meet together he's trying to make a statement that the lord is the maker of them all god made them as men they separated themselves into those descriptions are you seeing it now don't forget our motivation again thy kingdom come thy will be done let's go to verse 7 proverbs 22 and verse 7 you see why it's a disturbing scripture when the bible talks about ruling it connects it to wealth read with me the first four words ready the first four words one two read one more time one more time leave whoever the rich rules over just the fact our concentration is that it is the rich that is ruling it doesn't matter who is under our concern is that it is the rich that is ruling over please keep that scripture there the rich ruleth over that's it that if you sustain the wealth of the kingdom it can give you a leverage to rise to a position of influence where you can exact dominion over individuals over a system over a territory the rich rule it over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender two more scriptures genesis chapter 42 we'll start from verse 1 and 2 genesis 42 this is jacob now genesis 42 1 and 2 please help us now when jacob saw that there was corn in egypt everybody say corn in egypt. corn in egypt there was corn there is nothing wrong with corn the only problem is the location just keep that scripture there it is dangerous when only egypt has corn because egypt is not a place that honors god however there is that is the only place that has corn the bible says when jacob saw that there was corn in egypt because of the sheer hunger of famine jacob said to his sons why do ye look upon one another verse 2 he says behold i have heard that there is corn in egypt now go down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die a prophet without corn will still die please listen to this the only thing that takes the saints to egypt is hunger hunger has a, a power of invitation that you cannot resist it will draw you from anywhere you are to where you will be destroyed was it not because they went to egypt that they were saved for a while and then later became slaves hunger will always take the church to egypt i have seen that there is corn even though i do not like the location there is nothing i can do about it because if we do not go to that location although we are prophets we will die ecclesiastes chapter 9 the fourth pillar of dominion and influence verse 13 ecclesiastes 9 and verse 13 this wisdom i have seen under the sun and it seemed great unto me uh-huh we're reading to verse 16 there was a little city so it's talking about a city and few men within it the bible says and there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it sin two now there was found in it a poor wise man everybody say it poor wise man one more time the bible says and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no man remembered that same it doesn't talk of wisdom again wisdom has finished his assignment yet no man remembered that same poor man and then here was my conclusion 16 
then said i wisdom is better than strength nigeria lagos covenant nation wafbeck nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words so wealth becomes the trade that carries wisdom to serve it well the poor man's wisdom is despised can i tell you this i know that there are abuses here and there and people have made all kinds of things out of what we call prosperity but in the name of jesus reject poverty Amen. it's an advice reject it think of your children while you are rejecting it think of your loved ones while you are rejecting it I give you an advice by the road of the apostolic and the prophetic in these end times reject poverty it's an individual choice I said before you life and death I said before you blessing and cursing do not allow anyone flatter you into believing that with mediocrity and lack somehow you will still navigate your way to rise to influence it's a joke not in today's world these are the pillars of influence let's do a quick recap before we touch on the last one and then we round up that the first pillar is growth and transformation the second pillar is value and productivity the third pillar is wisdom and excellence the fourth pillar is wealth and abundance the fifth pillar is the supernatural the ministry of signs and wonders a mysterious pillar that is able to lift the name of jesus and the banner of his name and his praise across territories acts chapter 5 and verse 12 down to 16 shiba kasubariata and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people and they were all in one accord and in solomon's porch we're reading to verse 16 and the rest does not and of the rest does no man join himself to them but the people did what magnified them the word magnified here is not a wrong word it is the word that was buttressed in galatians 1 and verse 24 and they glorified god in me god can be glorified in and through a man's life the excellency of your results the display of the power of the kingdom when men begin to lift you then you lift his own name so it becomes higher than you he says and i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw men to myself back to that scripture please acts chapter 5 we're reading now from verse 14 the bible says and believers were the more added to the lord multitudes of both men and women 15 in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of peter's passing show us the ancient paths would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient paths would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest. i just sang jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 it says to stand in the way please give us that scripture as i just read this it just touched me how far from the standard of god today's church is that a man's shadow he was not in a crusade he was passing 
today blind eyes open and thank god we celebrate miracles but look the efforts that are dissipated we call upon god we clash cymbals we play keyboard we sing we jump we lay hands on our head i'm not against those things but i'm saying look the effort as though god does not want to show up there is something we are missing we need to return to the authentic place of provable power dimensions of the grace of god that dumbfounds principalities and powers you are a ministry here i challenge you in the name of jesus thank god for the trickles of miracles that we see but in ancient times we will not even be qualified to be ushers not even in the welfare department find out the condition that you had to go through show us the ancient past would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient paths would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest I have seen miracles and signs and wonders in my life I say it with all humility but do you know every time I read scripture sometimes I just close my Bible and tears will just come down from my eyes I say Lord who deceived us like this Apostle Joshua Selman a great man of miracles you read your Bible and see that we do not come close to the least spiritual people in those days now this is not condemnation this is how you are challenged men can clap you into dimensions where you plateau in the spirit and stop rising and stop growing there must be a perpetual hunger and that hunger comes when you compare yourself with the reference of scripture not among yourselves for they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise the bible says the shadow of peter that you come and buy a soft drink just because your hand touched someone's shop as soon as you leave you brought heaven you come to visit someone you just sat down on their chair and say peace be unto this house suddenly storms 10 year old storms they hear your voice like a tornado in the realm of the spirit shalom be still church of the lord jesus wake up although we have seen the hand of god let's pat our backs only briefly there is a lot to do if we need to rise to a position where the church will not be silent it will not come by singing there is a dimension of the supernatural we need to reintroduce the foundation of the church in nigeria please take it higher for me my spirit is fired up now Gee. the church in nigeria have you read about our fathers the men and the women who handed this gospel to us they were men who were not really educated but they were men who had fire these were men who met god and they knew they met him i was watching a video one day and i began to cry one of the old yoruba prophets i don't know how the holy ghost led me to that video and he was talking and the sheer glory and presence that emanated i didn't know what he was saying and honestly i didn't care you you didn't need to be a yoruba person to be blessed the power that came from that man i said god what has happened to us where did we miss it this is my final session with you this has been my obsession to tell the church thank you for what you are doing but let us wake up if we think we are going to win the world at this pace think again there is a dimension of the power of god this is not for preachers this is not about ministry the effulgence of the life and the power and the glory of God
hela sila kusi atabranda katia that the holy ghost came upon meetings that refused to finish the, they were supposed to be two hour meetings well intentioned and someone just raised a song and that song brought his majesty and people there was no preacher again ah, oh lord you are my god psalm 63 says early will i seek you it says my soul longs for you my flesh thirsts for you it longs for you as in a dry and a weary land where there is no water verse 2 is the reason to see thy power and your glory in my life the same way i saw in the sanctuary let me tell you this this is a generation that seeks for signs these are not generations who will be loyal for nothing is the generation of our fathers that could be loyal to you whether they understand you or not this generation is intelligent enough to say if you claim that god heals here is my sick son i told god do not send me if all you give me is a sermon do not send me if all you give me is a lecture do not send me if all i will go with is my brain do not send me if all i go with is a song let there be a token of your presence upon my life let there be a token of your presence upon my hand why will i preach and when i'm done we just share the grace and the sick go back sick the oppressed go back oppressed listen if we do not rise to this level of the supernatural in the body of christ a time will come people will shout amen but we know they don't believe what we are saying and can i tell you this the desperation of men is beginning to push them to look for solutions because men are not fools if they don't find it with you and they discern god is not with you they will respect you for who you are but they will quietly go and look for where to get real solutions many testimonies we share in church today did not come from church i'm sorry to say it forgive me we'll reconcile after the meeting but it's true because when men become desperate they can do anything don't toy with the desperation of men i will not watch my son die if i come to you and you cannot heal the person that desperation of a mother will push people to go and get solution anywhere and yet we continue to say jesus is lord we continue to say since i was young now i am old out of a hundred people if two people are healed is that a good assessment if there are 30 blind people and only two see yes we give god glory but that's not all god can do This is my obsession this is why we refuse to get satisfied the supernatural manifestation of God's power by which God demonstrates his ability to save to heal to deliver to lift to prosper his people they are expressions of his love they are also expressions of his might can I tell you this our world today is an arrogant world the spirit that was on nebuchadnezzar darius the spirit that was on herod has now come and is sitting on the kings of the earth you see the way they cheapen the church now and they say it with all sense of pride it's almost as if you are deserving of an award to the degree to which you downplay the church it's not their fault there is a dimension of the display of the power and the glory of god that can silence the mouth of all and sundry jacob said the lord was in this place and i knew not he said surely this is the house of god the gates of heaven in the days of the generals there were a few people who sat down and they were mocking they were making mockery of of um maria woodward eater they laughed at her in her crusade and she looked at them and said god judge you the tongue of one of them protruded they prayed and prayed it didn't go down he had to come himself and say do you know what i was stupid now i know jesus is lord she slapped the tongue and it went down now when you have an example like that
that a popular madman on the street of lagos a popular demonic suddenly he comes under the influence of this kingdom that we so boast about and his life comes under perfect order it is my prayer that we will not only watch miracles and signs and wonders in the life of those who have pressed a bit into god but that there will be a hunger in us to say lord i'm tired of an ordinary life i'm tired of just praying and saying things i cannot defend i'm tired of proposing dimensions about god i do not sustain the grace requirement to defend i write these things unto you O excellent theophilus of all that jesus began to do and teach i have a few minutes this is my final session we are going to pray and i want to pray for you it is my desire that something will come upon your life who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down and every ocean roars to the king of kings that's the god that we serve who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down and every ocean rolls to the lord of lords we will praise adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day praise adonai all the nations of the earth all the angels and the saints sing praise listen let there be a desperation in your heart as we pray for the next two minutes cry unto god there is there is a need oh god for my life to be part of the lives that you use to bring down the kingdom the power and the glory of heaven i'm tired of church as it is i'm tired of religion there is a hunger in my life i contend for growth and transformation i contend for value and productivity i contend for wisdom and excellence i contend for wealth and abundance but in this season oh god and in this end time i contend for the supernatural covenant nation Wolfbeck all following and all watching lift your voice and let's pray blow the trumpet in zion sound the alarm upon my holy mountain someone is crying to the god of heaven pray pray take us back oh God to the days of our fathers in this country some of you even come from those physical families lift your voice and pray here at Wafbeck Lord we cry for a display of the kingdom the power the glory of God the effulgence of your spirit the anthem of Nigeria says that the labor of our heroes past shall not be in vain Lord we pray that the graces and the mantles that were upon our fathers the graces and the mantles that founded the church in Nigeria we cry for a restoration of those ancient mantles spring up our wells for a time like this
Someone is praying. Pastors pray. It's time for fire on our altars again. Businessmen pray. A dimension of the wisdom and the excellence of the spirit. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth. Cross darkness the people. But upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. It says, Gentiles will come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. We are a praying people. Lift your voice and pray. Something from heaven is about to come upon your life. I assure you by the spirit of the living God. we are still praying forget about who is at your left and right it's time to receive Wafbeck, a platform for receiving something that can change your life we are here for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what you do set our hearts on you so you'll do what you do this is a move we need a move this is a move Someone is praying, Lord, visit my ministry, visit my life. What you showed me in my dreams and my visions here at Wafbeck, let it come alive, oh God. Fan the flames of my destiny, fan the flames of my ministry. Hey, Palas Kabarata, you who are watching in your homes, watching in your offices, watching online, participate in the prayer open up your spirit from the u.s to the uk from asia to africa lift your voice and begin to pray let something come upon my life oh god that will set me on fire manifesting the supernatural signs wonders tokens of his presence in my territory in my community
your life must change it's a prophecy to you your life must change your life must change your life must change your mind must change your mind must change your home must change for someone who is trusting God for healing your health must change Lord, I came to receive. I came to rise to a new dimension in the spirit. Wafbeck. An encounter with the word. An encounter with the spirit. Receiving the supplies for the days ahead. Hallelujah. Now, please listen. Listen. I'm only here for a few minutes some of you are crying do not be ashamed of your tears I came here with the spirit of revival I came here with the spirit of grace please listen to me many years ago I became sick and tired of religion I became sick and tired of watching the sick and the oppressed go even though i came from a background that was evangelical i knew there had to be more my hunger drove me to begin to search the scripture and the life of men and women who were mightily used by god in every generation I always share this story to edify the body of Christ I speak on this platform to the church universal there is something that the hunger of a man can do when you become hungry and desperate for the truth even in ignorance the mercy of God honors it I remember weeks turning to days sir. days turning to weeks I said God you cannot send me to a generation with nothing what would be my message and that night the Lord Jesus Christ came to me when he walked into my room I'm standing there and watching his majesty the one preachers talk about I said my God could I have been able to represent this man if I did not see him I was I was embarrassed by my ignorance of him even though I was preaching he never said a word yet he said many things it was then I knew in the realm of the spirit you've heard me say it that you do not have to talk to speak the light of God is his language it entered my spirit he stretched his hand towards me and a beam of light entered my spirit how I did not die is a mystery that I will ask him to explain when we get to heaven and then in another vision he mandated me he said every nation and every territory you go to there must be someone in that meeting the light that came from me to you that light there has to be someone that that light will land upon please help those under the anointing when this happened at another separate encounter the Lord spoke to me and said my son I give you my presence from this day as a gift all of a sudden I see this huge angel standing and I said who is this and he said this angel will walk with you I said what is his name and he said he's called the angel of the Lord's presence and I said is this not supposed to be God himself I was confused and this is the reason why many times you see some of these manifestations I explain this thing to you so you don't mix what we are doing with respectfully speaking some of the excesses you stay around 
because it is important that we give a precedence to the demonstration of the spirit upon our lives lest it be confused i have stayed faithful to that mandate that every time god gives me an opportunity to minister to his people i know that he draws people with the hunger to receive we have few minutes and i plead for just a few minutes but there is something that must come upon your life oh come oh come emmanuel and run some captivity israel oh come oh come emmanuel and run some captivity israel rejoice rejoice emmanuel has come to you his israel he has come to you his israel pastor you know one night i was i was watching william branham and while i was watching him i could see the presence and the glory of god upon that man and i said why were people criticizing this man because at the later part of his life and his ministry please help me with the drums help me with the cymbal and i was watching him with with passion i said why would such a man be criticized by people who carried so much dimension of god and i said lord help us to honor the people that you have used and while i prayed that something happened suddenly there was like a cold sensation from my head from my laptop it started going down gradually gradually over the course of 30 minutes i didn't know what had happened by the next meeting as soon as i went there suddenly i began to see the names of people and i started seeing a lot of supernatural things until then here and there i would walk in the world of knowledge and here and so on and so forth i learned that honor is the key for reception whatever you despise you will never have it even if you are around the proximity of it it's one of the reasons why we hardly receive in the body of christ there is no discernment i want to pray I see the angels of the Lord in this place. Parusa ziza has kabaruda shiata. Help them. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the seasons, creating day and night, turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing in the name of jesus i stretch my hands let the fire of the holy ghost from my left to my right in the name of jesus the ignition that must come upon lives and destinies at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus and as you shout that name there are many of you the dreams and the visions that you have had you have seen yourself walking in supernatural dimensions that grace is about to step into your life one two three shout that name take that grace help them please please help them take that grace in the name of jesus fresh fire upon your destiny i shift you to levels in the spirit dimensions of power dimensions of grace drink of ancient fountains in the name of jesus the christ hallelujah now please listen revelation is a spirit there is the spirit of revelation paul called it the grace that makes all men see ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9 there is a grace that can make all men see i want to pray for you there are men and women who came to Wafbeck with hunger hunger to receive spiritual illumination 
access to the mysteries of the kingdom i stretch my hands in the name of jesus the son of the living god may that grace come upon your life right now may that grace come upon your life right now help her please Harusa ziata hashala pando ziaka, krada kashala kaso brende getash. Eke paruda sazi asha hashala badu zaziya. Maka prada gato shala kapanda sala kato ziata. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. The Lord is leading in my spirit, even if it's in thirty seconds, to just say something. This is a vision that I've never shared, but my spirit will not allow me. In that vision, I was in a pastor's conference. There were many men of God around this nation and across Africa. I say this to the glory of the Lord and I'm saying it just because of something God wants to do. And while I was there, they were fathers i didn't know some of them it looked like some of them had died but they were still represented and then among them i began to see the fathers of faith in this nation they were seated but they were in front then there were other vacant seats in front of them but people had not yet occupied them i said what is this that i'm seeing all of a sudden i saw our great father in the faith that the Adeboe, and he was sitting in one of the seats and he looked through the crowd and pointed me slowly he said come they were serving a meal and he got up from the seat and sat on the ground with the meal and i could see anger and bitterness i was even afraid while i was walking and i was coming out i said what is this this our father wants to embarrass me and he said climb the stage when i climbed it he said sit down let's eat i said i would never do that i came from a background where i was well trained i will never do that i honor you sir you are my father you are my grandfather i will not do that he said do you respect me i said yes he said eat when i dipped my hands all of a sudden i came out from that vision from that day the creative dimension of the prophetic the grace to speak and cause things forgive me if i sound arrogant it is never my intention but i'm saying that so that you will receive this grace that is on us we are not the originators of it it's a relay in the name of jesus the son of the living god i stand by the god of all flesh and i declare every challenge that has refused to give way over your life i come by the rod of a higher priesthood and in the name of jesus christ i declare that challenge is gone forever gone forever gone forever gone forever gone forever every door that would not open i speak to it by prophecy lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors i speak to those doors help them please Efata, be open Efata, be open i speak to everyone here trusting god for a job according to the time of life i declare by the spirit of grace return with testimonies There are people in need of restoration. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore. I join my faith with the faith of your pastor, the angel of the Lord over this house. And I decree and declare, whatever has left you that should not leave you, I call it by name. Help them please, my God. And I command it to return back to you. I command it to return back to you lost opportunities lost relationships resources hear the word of the lord return in the name of jesus
can i pray for you every seat you should be sitting there and there is another sitting there i stand by the voice of prophecy i overturn i overturn i overturn until you sit at that seat of destiny i don't kill but any man who found that over his dead body that you will rise that prayer becomes answered job said he will deliver you from six things one of it is the scourging tongues of men i declare over you that every tongue that has risen against you risen against your life your ministry your influence i stand by the god of heaven i call upon the god of jeshuron the one who rides upon the wings of the winds and i declare in the name of jesus that tongue is judged forever everyone here trusting god for the fruit of the womb in the name of jesus by this time next year we declare by the spirit of god by this time next year return with your miracle in the name of jesus the christ of god pastor thank you so much i sincerely appreciate you and your dear wife and i thank this assembly for the honor and the privilege to bring the word of god the lord bless you the lord increase you in jesus name